In a mysterious world, people live alongside magical spirit pets. Many people manage to become the owner of such a pet, which becomes a loyal friend and assistant in battle. At the very edge of the southern archipelago lies the island of nightmares, shrouded in mystery. A huge wooden fence rises around the ancient monastery, the sight of which fills newcomers with horror. The monks of the monastery activate magical seals. They gather all the novices in the main courtyard. An energy vortex appears above the magical seal, and the monotonous singing of monks is heard. The guy carefully examines those around him. A few days ago, he was caught and sent to the island of nightmares. Monks, with the help of magical seals, summon their hellish guard wolves. On the island of nightmares, in a mysterious monastery, a terrible and inhumane experiment is being conducted. The goal is the rapid growth of special spirit pets called nightmares. Nightmares have the ability to absorb the soul of their owner. This makes them special and dangerous creatures. Every newcomer who is caught and brought to the island of nightmares is forced to sign a contract with the nightmare. All test subjects are at constant risk of being consumed by nightmares. The new prisoner's name is Chu. He intends to survive in this terrible place at all costs. A monk addresses the prisoners from the observation deck and announces that he will now undergo a physical test. The monk says that only half of the captives will make it to the next stage, who cannot be defeated by the monk's spiritual pets. The senior monk's name is Cao, and he hopes that the survivors will become worthy disciples and be able to gain the right to enter the Temple of Nightmares. Emitting a loud howl, the monk's hellish guard wolves rush at the defenseless captives. The guy standing alone does not have time to react to the attack. The guard wolf pounces on him. In a matter of seconds, the evil hellish creature deals with the guy with extreme cruelty. The wounded guy tries to escape, but the guard wolf quickly catches up with him. The group of prisoners is surrounded on all sides by the hellish guard wolves of the monks. The doomed people scream loudly. The teenagers are seized with wild horror. They realize that they do not have the slightest chance of salvation. Chu, running away, examines the size and coloring of the guard wolves. He understands that they are at least level eight. The guy believes that such guard wolves will be quite difficult to deal with. Chu decides to run away since, without any weapons, it is pointless to get involved in a fight with such an enemy. The hellish guard wolves of the monks do not leave the prisoners the slightest chance of survival. The monks are carefully watching what is happening. Their cheerful laughter is heard. They joyfully discuss the hunt. Most of the captives remain alive, so the hellish hunt for them continues. Chu quickly runs in the direction of the guy standing alone. He is surprised that the guy is not running for his life. Chu recognizes him as Joe, who is one of the most experienced teenagers sent to Nightmare Island. Chu runs past him and tells him that the monk's hellish guard wolf is running after him. Joe abruptly grabs the hand of Chu running past him. The guy does not have time to react and free himself from the grip. Joe hypes the guy up a lot. Chu is very surprised and does not understand his intentions. Having spun the guy around, Joe throws him at the monk guard wolf pursuing them. The huge, hellish guard wolf of the monks opens its mouth. It tries to catch the Chu flying at it. The guard wolf of the monks almost manages to grab the leg of Chu flying at him. At the last moment, the guy dodges. He flies past, and behind him hears the sound of the closed jaws of a guard wolf. Chu suddenly jumps to his feet and struggles to escape from the monk's guard wolf. The guy doesn't have enough speed to break away from the pursuit. The hellish guard wolf catches up with Chu. The guy uses all his physical capabilities to the limit. His plans do not include dying in today's physical test. Having gained great speed, Chu abruptly stops and falls to the ground. The trick works, and the guard wolf flies over the guy. Chu is filled with strong anger. He very much regrets that he does not have any weapons in today's battle. The guard wolf smelled blood. He approached the guy, opened his huge mouth, and let out a wild roar. The guard wolf of the monks rushes at the guy, loudly chattering his teeth. He tries to bite off Chu's head. The guy is struggling to hold on to the guard wolf. The beast's deadly jaws are very close to his face. The guy's strength gradually leaves him. He begins to realize that these are his last seconds of life. There is a clap of palms as the senior monk announces that the physical test is completed. A flute melody sounded on the observation deck. This is a signal for the guard wolves. The guard wolves stop pursuing the captives and reluctantly return to their owners. The wolf that attacked the guy slowly leaves. Chu, gathering his last strength, tries to get to his feet. The senior monk expresses satisfaction with the test result and reminds that tomorrow the prisoners will begin hunting for the souls of their pets. 
The senior monk orders the surviving prisoners to immediately go to their barracks. The wounded teenagers, suffering from numerous wounds, head to their barracks. From the observation deck, the senior monk closely monitors Chu, who was wounded in battle. The guy's wounds are very serious. He loses consciousness. His lifeless body falls to the ground. The residence of the chief master of Shia is located in a huge stone castle on the edge of a cliff. The maid informs the senior monk Chao that the chief master is ready to receive him. Chao goes into the master's personal office and sees him standing at the large window, the master looking into the distance. Kneeling down in front of the master, Chao expresses humility and says that he has arrived on his orders. Chief Master Sia asks the head monk if the guy named Chu survived the physical test. Chao reports that the guy survived, although he was seriously wounded in a fight with a guard wolf. Master Sia considers the guy a promising warrior, as he showed good results on the physical test. Chao tells the master that he can finish off the guy named Chu at any moment. Suddenly, a nightmare demon appears in the room. He lets out a blood-curdling scream, and the elder monk falls to his knees. Senior Master Sia orders not to touch the guy under any circumstances. He has special plans for him. The teenagers surround Chu's lifeless body, wondering whether the guy is alive or dead. Chu received mortal wounds, and the surrounding teenagers doubt whether it is possible to survive with such wounds. A young man approaches a group of teenagers carrying a large basin of water in his hands. He pours water on Chu. The guy instantly regains consciousness. He turns over on his back and screams loudly. The guy is surprised that Chu survived. He tells him to pull himself together and get back on his feet. Chu, in severe pain, tries to get to his feet, hearing jokes and laughter from those around him. The surrounding teenagers encourage Chu. They tell him not to pretend and quickly get back on his feet. Joe doesn't like the way Chu looks at him and hits Chu on the head with a large wooden trough. The guy says that there is absolutely no point in impotent anger. He suggests that Chu concentrate on the nightmare demon. Joe voices his opinion that Chu is a weakling and the nightmare demon will consume him. Chu intends to take revenge on Joe, but to do this he needs to get better and get into good physical shape. The last of Chu's strength leaves him. He cannot control his body and loses consciousness. Waking up, lying on the bed, Chu slowly looks around, trying to remember how he got here. The doors of the barracks open and a girl named Ting enters the room. She asks the guy how he feels. Chu greets the girl, telling her that he feels much better and is glad that she is alive after the physical test. Ting puts a heavy basin of water on the table and says that the guy is alive thanks to her care. Chu thanks the girl for her help. Ting asks the guy not to move much, since he is still too weak. Ting reminds the guy that he is now her debtor, and in case of trouble he must help her. Chu agrees with the girl and promises to protect her in the future and help her in case of trouble. The guy is trying to remember how long he was unconscious. Ting tells the guy that he slept for at least three days. She believes that this was good for Chu. The girl asks the guy where he is going. She tells him that his wounds have not yet fully healed. Chu tells Ting that there is very little time left, and she needs to get the pet's soul as soon as possible, to which she cannot contain her laughter. The girl asks Chu to take her with him, but the guy refuses her, saying that if successful, they will not be able to share the pet's soul. The guy tells the girl that now she can't trust anyone, not even him. Chu leaves, slamming the door loudly. Ting wishes him a successful hunt and excellent trophies. Slowly walking along a forest path, Chu thinks about how good it would be to tame the spirit of a strong pet. Suddenly a cobra attacks the guy from the bushes. Chu deftly dodges its deadly attack. A wild, aggressive boar rushes towards the guy, but Chu easily jumps over him and, as if nothing had happened, continues on his way. The guy intends to pass through the forest as quickly as possible and end up in the main area of the island where strong spirits live. Suddenly, Chu's road is blocked by huge thickets of thorny thorns. Suddenly, a huge sprout of thorny thorn emerges from the bushes and grabs the guy by the leg. Chu loses his balance and falls. A huge shoot drags the guy into a thicket of thorny thorns. The guy desperately resists. He takes out a knife and chops off the huge thorny shoots attacking him. For a moment, Chu escapes from the captivity of the thorny thorn, but another shoot again grabs his leg. The crackling of breaking bushes is heard, and a demon of thorny thorns slowly crawls out of the thickets. In the hope of being freed, the guy uses a knife to cut off the shoot that is holding him by the leg. The thorn demon is significantly injured and lets out a loud scream. The guy, taking advantage of the moment, 
tries to break through the dense bushes of prickly thorns and run away. Chu is well aware of the enormous threat posed by the thorn demon, which is the most dangerous of the carnivorous plants. Chu managed to cut a passage through a solid wall of thorny thorns and is trying to escape from the demon. The guy is pleased that he was able to get through the dense thorn bushes. The attack of the thorn demon continues. It throws thorny poisonous shoots towards the guy. The guy runs away from the thorn demon. His path is blocked by a cliff. Chu runs up and jumps down. The thorn demon tries to grab the guy with its long, thorny shoots. Chu screams loudly and accelerates and flies headfirst off a high cliff. Salvation comes to the guy in the form of an old, dried tree to which he clings with his clothes. The guy's joy is short-lived as the dry branch breaks and the guy continues to fall down. Having fallen from a great height to the ground, Chu comes to his senses and hears the quiet steps of an unfamiliar beast. The paws of an unknown creature slowly fall to the ground. The animal tries to sneak up on the guy unnoticed. Chu takes out his sharp knife and hides behind a tree. He intends to give a worthy rebuff to the beast. The guy watches the scarlet cloud fox approaching him. Chu is very surprised by the presence of such a beast. The scarlet cloud fox does not feel a threat in the guy. She comes very close to him. Chu is trying to drive away the annoying animal. The scarlet cloud fox is carefully watching the guy. The guy's efforts bear fruit. The fox turns around and slowly goes into the forest. The guy slowly moves along the forest road and thinks that the fox is a very weak animal. Chu climbs a tall tree. He looks into the distance and observes a fighting lizard on the shore, which is a third-level pet. An unsuspecting fighting lizard approaches the stream and slowly quenches its thirst. Suddenly, an unfamiliar young guy runs up to her. He is going to capture the soul of a combat pet. The guy uses a soul capture pact on the fighting lizard in hopes of turning the creature into his pet. The energy emanating from the magical seal begins to engulf the battle lizard's tail. The unfamiliar guy fails to perform an energy grab and the fighting lizard attacks him. The guy is trying his best to escape from the fighting lizard pursuing him. Chu, being on a high tree, carefully watches the actions taking place. The guy believes that you need to carefully prepare before capturing the soul of a pet, since a worthy pet can offer strong resistance. He builds a huge cage from branches and twigs, which he lifts up a tall tree with the help of a rope. The huge trap is ready. Chu uses a fragment of the soul core as bait, which is a favorite treat for many pets. Most of the day passes, but not a single pet comes close to the guy's trap. Chu's thoughts are interrupted by a large caterpillar, which falls from a tree onto his head and crawls onto his hand. The caterpillar attracts the guy's attention with its unusual behavior and the bright shine of its eyes. Chu considers the large caterpillar not a particularly useful acquisition, but decides to keep it with him for good luck. The guy shares his modest lunch with the big caterpillar. The caterpillar thanks the guy by making a quiet squeak. The guy notices the beast approaching his trap and prepares to capture the pet's soul. Walking carefully on the ground, a small scarlet cloud fox slowly approaches the bait. Carefully looking around, the little fox takes a fragment of the soul core. The pet really likes the delicacy. The guy does not dare to lower the cage because he believes that it is impossible to waste a trap on such a weak animal. Chu watches the little fox leave with the bait, hoping that the next pet will be stronger and more useful. On the second day, a small blue fox reacts to the bait. The guy hopes for a visit from a stronger pet. The next day, a yellow step fox comes to the trap. The guy is upset by the lack of serious pets. It's the fourth day of hunting. The guy can't understand why there are no other pets except foxes. His patience comes to an end. He runs out into the clearing, sending angry curses at the small and weak pets. The next day, Chu observes exactly the same picture, which infuriates him. A northern gray fox slowly approaches the bait with a soul core fragment. She takes the soul fragment and listens to the noise coming from the bushes. The guy lets go of the rope. The trap cage falls to the ground with a roar. The northern fox firmly holds the fragment of the soul in his teeth. The northern gray fox manages to dodge the flying cage and flees. The guy tries to catch up with the pet. A large caterpillar helps the guy in the hunt. It spits out a long, sticky web. A web tightly binds the hind legs of a running northern gray fox. The tied pet is unable to escape. An enraged Chu cautiously approaches it. The guy sincerely thanks the big green caterpillar for his help. He did not expect that it would be so useful in the hunt. The guy tells the captured pet that if his powers prove useless, he will be eaten for dinner. 
Suddenly, Chu notices a very strange detail on the head of a gray northern fox. Chu sees a very strangely shaped crescent moon on his forehead. The guy can't remember what it is, but he's already seen it somewhere. Suddenly, Chu remembers that all the foxes that came to the trap had a similar crescent moon on their forehead. The guy comes up with a version that he needs to check. He begins to study ancient books. Chu learns that some pets have a rare skill such as species change. A pet that can transform into various animals can grant its owner endless power. Chu activates a magical contract of soul capture. He intends to become the master of the northern gray fox. The guy directs the energy of the soul capture seal at the gray northern fox, but the pet actively resists. Chu is very surprised that such a small animal can resist the magic seal so effectively. The northern gray fox refuses to sign a soul capture agreement with the guy. Chu does not understand why the pet resists and refuses him to sign the contract. He becomes wildly furious. The guy activates the magical seal of the contract again. He intends to get the pet. Chu can't get a pet for himself. He has only one attempt left to sign the contract. A northern gray fox frees herself from the sticky web that binds her legs and tries to escape unnoticed. Chu notices in time that the northern fox has freed himself from his bonds and tries to catch up with her. The northern gray fox is hiding in the thorn bushes. The guy cannot get through the dense thorny bushes. An unknown force throws the northern fox out of the thorn bushes. It growls loudly as it flies through the air. The guy barely manages to dodge the blow of two huge shoots of the thorn demon. A heartbreaking scream is heard. A demon of thorns emerges from the thickets. Breaking the bushes with a crash, he heads towards the guy. The thorn demon throws his formidable weapon at the guy. Huge, thorny shoots hit the ground, lifting pieces of soil into the air. The thorn demon picks up huge rocks with its thorny shoots, intending to use them as throwing weapons. A hail of stones flies in the direction of the guy and the northern gray fox. Some of them reach the target. The guy effectively uses his defensive skills to deflect rocks flying at him. Some of the stones hit the gray northern fox and kill it. The thorn demon tries to grab the northern fox with its thorny shoots. The guy screams loudly. His plans do not include his pet being devoured by a disgusting thorn demon. Chu manages to outrun the thorny tentacles of the thorn demon and saves the northern fox. The thorn demon continues to deliver endless chaotic strikes with its huge thorny shoots. The thorn demon manages to capture the northern fox and the guy and lifts them high above the ground. Chu tells the northern fox that they have only one chance of salvation. The guy asks the northern fox not to resist and to immediately sign the soul capture agreement. Chu activates the soul capture contract seal, hoping for the northern fox's understanding. The northern gray fox, without thinking for a long time, agrees to sign the soul capture agreement. After signing the soul capture agreement, the gray fox gets the opportunity to activate his superpowers. With energy rays, the gray fox chops the huge thorny shoots of the thorn demon into small pieces. The thorn demon screams terribly. He has received critical damage and is unable to continue the fight. Chu captures the thorn demon's spiritual core, which materialized after his loss. The thorn demon uses his last trump card. He spews a huge lightning bolt from his mouth. His attack brings no results, and the thorn demon tries to hide underground. Quickly drilling into the ground, the thorn demon tries to dive as deep into the ground as possible. The northern gray fox watches the thorn demon sink underground and howls loudly at the moon. Chu takes away the thorn demon spiritual core. He believes that today's battle brought in a good catch. The guy throws the thorn demon spiritual core to the northern gray fox. Chu watches as the guy who appeared from the darkness intercepts the flying spiritual core of the thorn demon. A satisfied Zhanglo appears from the darkness. He is the owner of a huge fighting Skolopendra. Chu and Zhanglo stand motionless opposite each other and carefully look at their battle pets. Chu tells Zhanglo that this is his spiritual core and demands that the guy return it immediately. Zhanglo begins to mock the guy. He tells him that he cannot understand what spiritual core Chu is telling him about. Chu is very surprised that Zhang Lo has a second-level spiritual core. Zhang Lo intends to leave, but Chu abruptly demands that he stay put. The guy offers a very lucrative deal to Zhang Lo to exchange his insect spirit cores for beast spirit cores. Zhang Lo believes that the exchange makes no sense. He wants to kill Chu and take the spiritual cores for himself. Chu says that according to the rules of the stewards, in order to fight, you need to openly challenge your opponent to a duel. Zhang Lo greatly afraid of the consequences, does not dare to break the rules of the stewards. 
Zhang Lo sets the time for the duel in two days. He asks Chu not to lose his spiritual cores during this time. Ting plays with a gray northern fox while Chu studies ancient books that contain information about the new pet. Ting asks the guy if he named his new pet. Chu thinks it's a good idea. Chu is thinking about what name would be most suitable for his new pet. The guy decides to name his new pet Katana, after the legendary battle sword. Ting thinks that the gray northern fox really likes his new name. Katana lets out a quiet growl in agreement. After studying the basic characteristics of his pet, Chu comes to the disappointing conclusion that Katana has a rather small number of abilities. Ting asks the guy if he is confident in defeating the decapod Scolopendra of his opponent. Chu tells the girl that he is completely confident of victory, and besides, he does not have the opportunity to get another pet before the duel begins. Chu decides that he should prepare as best he can for the upcoming duel. Ting invites the guy to conduct joint training. She considers them more effective. Chu does not listen to the girl. He turns to the wall and quickly falls into a deep sleep. The girl doubts the guy's victory and believes that he chose a very weak pet. Ting likes Katana very much. She thinks he is a cute and cute animal. Chu and Katana walk through the old forest. The guy reflects on how great his chances of winning the duel are. The guy believes that the time has come to upgrade his pet's superpowers. He approaches a large, strong tree. Chu orders his pet to activate his superpowers and cut down the tree. Katana confidently picks up great speed. Approaching the tree, he releases his sharp claws. Katana jumps onto a tree hoping to cut it down, but the pet is not strong enough to do this, and its movements are not confident. The pet leaves only a minor scratch on the tree bark. Chu's laughter is heard. The guy orders his pet to try again, hoping that Katana will achieve better results over time. The pet repeats several attempts. He stops due to the fact that he injured his paws. Chu believes that his injuries are not serious and insists on continuing his training. Katana repeats his attempts furiously, attacking the tree again and again in the hope of cutting it down. After several hours of continuous attacks, Katana manages to knock down a huge tree. Chu praises his pet for the work he has done and invites him to relax in a special space designed for pets to rest. The guy opens a portal to this special place and sends Katana there. Chu remembers a nearby village where good raw materials and medicines can be found to heal and develop beyond one's abilities. The guy begins to prepare a remedy to treat his pet's paws. Ting watches him carefully. The treatment benefits Katana, his broken claws heal and his new ones become even sharper. Chu hopes that Katana will become even stronger and take a leading place among the pets of the Island of Nightmares. Katana has fully recovered from his training and is feeling great. His new claws are stronger and sharper than before. The guy's pet shows by its appearance that he is ready for the upcoming duel and is looking forward to it. Chu is happy that he chose Katana as his spiritual pet. The guy has high hopes for him. Ting comes into the room. She tells the guy that Zhang Lo is already waiting for him on the battlefield. Chu realizes that the time for a duel has come, and he intends to severely punish the upstart. On the duel field, everything is ready for the upcoming fight. Those present are awaiting the arrival of the duelists. A monk named Zhang begins to read out the rules and responsibilities of the opponents in the upcoming fight. Those present still don't watch Chu's fight on the field. They think that the guy chickened out. Gutson's voice is heard. He says that he observes the approach of Chu and his pet to the battlefield. Zhang Lo expresses confidence that he will easily deal with the guy in the upcoming fight. In a great mood and with their heads held high, Chu and Ting approach the battlefield. A guy named Gutson has a high combat level snake as his pet. Ting tells the guy that the pet Gutson is one of the strongest nightmares on the island. Monk Zhang announces the start of the duel. He asks the spectators to step aside and clear the central area of the site for the battle. The opponents take fighting stances opposite each other, and the monk begins the countdown to the start of the fight. Zhang Lo looks angrily towards the guy. He activates the magical seal of the spirit pet contract. Chu sees that the enemy is preparing to attack, and without wasting any time, he activates his magic seal. Ting tells the guy that the enemy's pet has very good speed, so Katana must constantly move. Chu asks the girl to stay put and not interfere in the fight. Ting is unhappy with the fact that the guy never listens to her. By activating the magical seal of the pet contract, Chu connects to subtle energy fields. Scolopendra, using the fourth dimension, sneaks up on the unsuspecting katana. Chu instantly notices the secret movement of his opponent's battle pet and realizes the impending threat. 
Chu sends a signal to its pet. Katana instantly reacts to the enemy's attack. Spiritual pet Chu jumps high in the air and delivers a powerful slash to the centipede with its claws. The blow does not do much harm to the Scolopendra, and Katana jumps to the side, taking up a more advantageous position. Zhanglo considers such an attack pointless, since the Scolopendra's chest is protected by thick, reliable armor. Using its size and weight advantage, the massive Scolopendra slowly advances towards Katana. Zhang Lo orders his battle pet to immediately destroy the worthless opponent. In a split second, Katana runs up to the Scolopendra and uses her trained strikes to destroy the monstrous pet. Zhang Lo can't believe what's happening. He didn't even have time to blink an eye before his pet was destroyed. Zhang Lo screams loudly, realizing that his career has come to an end, and with it there is a real threat to his life. He sends angry curses at Chu and his pet. He hates the guy with every cell of his body. Chu's opponent has no choice. He quietly takes out his huge, sharp knife. Spewing out loud screams and curses, Zhang Lo rushes at the guy in a swift attack, a huge blade sparkling in his hand. Ting watches what is happening carefully. She is very worried about the guy. The distance between the opponents is closing. Zhang Lo is quickly approaching Chu. He takes several large steps and leaps high into the air, raising the sharp blade above his head to strike. Katana sees what is happening and decides to react immediately to help her master. Martial spirit Pet Chu knocks the knife out of Zhang Lo's hands with a sharp blow of its paws. Chu's opponent screams loudly, suffering significant wounds. His attempt at a surprise attack was unsuccessful. Chu tells his opponent that if he does not stop resisting, he will be immediately destroyed. Zhang Lo realizes his inevitable loss. He is filled with despair and fierce hatred. Chu wins the duel, receiving a handful of spiritual stones as a reward. He is about to leave the battlefield, but hears a voice demanding that he stop immediately. Pushing away the spectators, the owner of the fighting snake Gutsen approaches the guy. He intends to avenge his friend. Gutsen is full of determination and anger. He is going to use the full power of his battle pet. Gutsen activates his magical pact seal and summons his pet to rush into battle. The sight of a huge snake emitting a loud hiss evokes boundless horror among those around, which makes the blood run cold. Monk Zhang is unhappy with the violation of the regulations, but he wants to see the full power of the giant snake and is not going to interfere with what is happening. Ting is very unhappy that Monk Zhang does not intend to stop Gutsen. Chu understands the complexity of the upcoming battle, since the enemy's battle pet has a very high level. Gutsen sees Chu's great confusion and orders his battle pet to attack. The huge battle snake obeys Gutsen's orders and quickly approaches Chu and his battle pet. The opponents stand opposite each other. Suddenly, they are distracted by a strong, heart-rending scream. There is a great commotion in the spectators, and those around him look at Zhang Lo in surprise. Zhang Lo falls to the ground, emitting loud cries, and gasping for breath, he asks others to help him. Gutsen immediately stops the fight and rushes to the aid of his friend. Zhang Lo begins to experience terrible horror, realizing the cause of his physical ailment. Gutsen runs up to his friend. He shakes him by the shoulders in an attempt to bring Zhang Lo back to his senses. A strong energy release occurs, throwing Gutsen tens of meters away. Instantly, Zhang Lo begins to spin into a huge energy vortex. The guy does not have the slightest opportunity to resist this force. A terrible scream is heard, and a huge, ugly nightmare materializes behind the guy. Zhang Lo screams heart-rendingly. He does not agree that his time on the island of nightmares has come to an end. Those around are excited by the unexpected appearance of the spirit of a nightmare. A feeling of horror fills the entire space around. Chu and Ting's thoughts agree that Zhang Lo does not have the slightest chance of surviving in this situation. Gutsen can do nothing to help his friend, and is forced to simply stand and watch as the spirit of the nightmare grows to enormous proportions. The flower demon moves quickly and uses its poisonous shoots to attack the enemy. Katana dodges the flower demon's attack with incredible speed and delivers a fatal blow to it. Ting is surprised at how quickly the katana dealt with a very high-ranking opponent. Katana sees his owner and jumps into his arms. The guy intends to continue training his pet to improve his fighting characteristics. Ting believes that Katana has already reached a great level of combat, as it can cope with superior opponents. Ting warns the guy that there are pets on the island that Katana will never be able to resist. A group of teenagers train their spiritual pets in secret from the abbots of the monastery. Chu remembers his old offender Zhou. He intends to soon find him and take revenge for the offense caused. Ting wants to know what the guy is up to. She is worried about his excited appearance. 
Ting has high hopes for Chu and believes that by continuing to train, the guy and his spirit pet can achieve great results. Chu leaves the girl. He is going to go to the center of the island to buy medicinal herbs. The girl asks the guy to take her with him, to which Chu asks her to stay at home, since the center of the island is an unsafe place. Humming a cheerful melody, the guy confidently walks towards the center of the island. A large green caterpillar is alarmed by an unfamiliar noise coming from the forest thicket. The big green caterpillar asks the guy to lift it higher to assess the situation. She takes a comfortable position. Chu lifts her high above his head. The guy asks if the caterpillar has discerned the cause of the unfamiliar noise and if there is danger ahead. Teenagers patrol the territory where they train their spiritual pets in secret from the temple abbots. The guys talk about how powerful their leader's spiritual pet is. The leader of the teenagers intends to create a secret organization with which he can gain enormous power on the island of nightmares. Chu, quietly creeping up to the patrol, listens carefully to their conversations about the leader. From their conversation, he learns that the leader of the teenagers is going to take possession of three spiritual pets. Chu makes a careless move that causes noise. The patrol takes notice. The patrol decides to check out what this unknown noise is and head towards the bushes where Chu is hiding. At great speed, one of the patrolmen is attacked by Katana, using a strike with its hind legs. One patrolman is eliminated. He falls to the ground. His partner did not expect such a sharp attack. The partner of the deceased patrolman recognizes the stranger as Chu. He is surprised by his presence at the secret training ground. The patrolman activates the magical spirit pet pact and summons his stone demon. A huge stone demon awaits orders. He is ready to carry out any order of his master. Having received the command to destroy the intruder, the stone demon immediately rushes to attack. Chu dodges a multi-ton blow that destroys the rock near which the guy was standing. The owner of the stone demon intends to quickly arrive at the secret camp to report the intruder. A large green caterpillar spits its long, sticky web at the fleeing owner of the stone demon. The mouth of the owner of the stone demon is sealed with cobwebs. He is unable to scream or call for help. The patrolman tries his best to clear the sticky web from his mouth, but he fails. Chu thanks the large green caterpillar for his help and orders Katana to attack the patrolman. The owner of the stone demon tries to free himself from the dense web to no avail. He calls his spiritual pet for help. A huge stone demon is trying to catch up with Katana. The roar of its multi-ton steps can be heard hundreds of meters away. The huge stone demon does not have time to protect its owner. Katana deals a fatal blow to the patrolman. The stone demon stands over the body of its defeated master. The agreement of the spiritual pets is terminated ahead of schedule. The stone demon turns around and slowly walks away. Chu does not understand why the pet did not take revenge for the death of its owner. The guy comes to the conclusion that the relationship between the owner and the spirit pet was not the warmest. Chu asks the big green caterpillar if he can locate the other members of the secret organization. The rest of the squad heard loud noises, but the teenagers do not know that it was their comrade's stone demon. The leader of the group sends a dark-haired guy on reconnaissance to find out what kind of sound attracted their attention. The leader of the group, named Long, orders not to stand on ceremony with the violators, but to immediately destroy them. A secret organization of teenagers has high-level soul pets at their disposal. Long invites the guy to conduct a training battle between his spiritual pets. The guy doesn't like using his spirit pet in an obviously unequal fight. The spirit pet named Steel Fang is full of strength. He is looking forward to his master's command. A huge armored rat intends to tear all his opponents to shreds. Long implements a tactical trick. He uses a sneak attack with his soul pet. Having the advantage of strength and surprise, Long's soul pet easily defeats its subordinate's pet. Long, using magical energy, tries to calm his spiritual pet. His subordinates wonder why the scout has not returned yet. Long uses his healing skills to restore order to the defeated spirit pet. The guy hears a loud crunch coming from the bushes. He thinks that it is their mission scout returning. Long and his subordinate begin to doubt that the sound from the nearby bushes belongs to their scout. Suddenly, Chu appears in front of them. He gives the guys an angry look and approaches them. Chu and his spirit pet stand in front of their opponents, full of determination. They are ready for an unequal fight. Severe panic grips Long's subordinate. He is unable to contain his emotions. Long orders his subordinate to attack Chu. The guy reports that his spiritual pet's strength is running out. Long promises his subordinate to help him acquire a third spiritual pet if he wins. 
The guy strongly doubts his victory over Chu. He believes that it is better to save his strength and part with the world. Chu and his soul pet launch a desperate attack against overwhelming enemy forces. Long's subordinate orders his huge armored rat to counterattack immediately. The armored rat delivers a series of powerful blows. Katana, using its advantages in speed, successfully maneuvers and dodges the blows. Close combat is not the best range for the katana, and Chu's soul pet takes numerous wounds. Chu thinks about what he can do to change the situation in his favor and win the fight. The guy comes up with a brilliant idea and orders Katana to use a skill called Obsession. Katana is not enthusiastic about using this skill, as she wants to defeat her opponent in a normal fight without using cunning tricks. Despite this, Chu insists on his decision. Katana agrees and activates her Obsession skill. Long reveals Chu's plan, deeming it useless since his buddy's soul pet is of a high level, allowing him to withstand such primitive magic. The huge armored rat continues to attack spiritual pet Chu as it raises its huge paw to strike. Chu, closing his eyes, tries to connect to the energy lines of the Island of Nightmares. A moment later, a powerful magical force permeates his body. His eyes emit streams of destructive energy. Long did not expect his opponent to use such skills, and he begins to doubt the outcome of the fight. Long orders his subordinate to immediately close Chu's eyes, but the guy continues to stand there hesitantly. Chu managed to connect to the energy lines of the Island of Nightmares. The armored rat froze in place. He did not dare to attack the guy. Wild horror has paralyzed the huge armored rat. Its body is shaking. It is unable to move. A bright energy beam emanating from Chu cuts the aggressive spirit pet in half. Long looks at what is left of his subordinate soul pet. He can't believe how this could happen. Chu throws his sharp combat blade, which hits the target. Another Long subordinate is eliminated from the game. Long, furious, accuses Chu of skillfully pretending to be a simpleton the entire time he was on Nightmare Island. He is very dissatisfied with the work of his subordinates and calls them a bunch of idiots and mediocrities. Long invites Chu to forget all differences and discuss the gigantic benefits of their joint cooperation. Chu becomes furious at such a proposal. He calls his opponent a scumbag and wishes him death. Despite heavy losses in his squad, Long does not lose heart, as he has not yet used his main soul pet. The materialized huge wolf werewolf howls loudly, opening his huge mouth. Long has high hopes for his main spiritual pet. Long's loud laughter is heard as he commands his spirit pet to obliterate his opponents. Chu warns the guy that he will soon suffer the same fate as his subordinates. The formidable wolf werewolf rushes to the attack, encouraged by the shouts of his owner. Spiritual pet Chu fearlessly runs towards the werewolf and activates his obsession skill. The werewolf strikes with his right paw. He reaches the target. The obsession skill does not help Katana. Spiritual pet Long felt the blood. He does not doubt for a second his quick and easy victory. Long is in high spirits, praising the werewolf for his skills and enormous strength. Long tells Chu that his worthless fox is not even worth a werewolf's fingernail. Chu does not believe that the end of the battle is a foregone conclusion. He believes in the hidden abilities of his spirit pet. Chu orders Katana to immediately take cover, and the spirit pet runs off into the bushes. Long is outraged by this behavior of his opponents, calling Chu and his spirit pet cowardly dogs. Katana sneaks through the bushes and suddenly strikes Long from behind. The werewolf notices this maneuver and protects its owner, throwing the katana to a safe distance. Katana was unable to repel Long's spirit pet's attack and flew off to the side, landing hard on the ground. For a werewolf, the battle is not easy or safe. He receives significant damage to his paws. Long carefully examines his soul pet's wounds and assesses the severity of the injuries. He concludes that the wounds are not significant and will not prevent his soul pet from continuing the duel. The werewolf is going to take a long time to stand on ceremony with the spiritual pet Chu and rushes into a furious attack. Katana cleverly uses the invisibility maneuver and avoids Long's spirit pet attack. Long is extremely dissatisfied with spirit pet Chu's use of disguise techniques. Chu believes that it is time to use the transformation skill. He gives the corresponding command to Katana. Energy discharges permeate the pet's body. It begins to transform into a huge moon wolf. A moment later, a completely different animal appears before the opponents, however, thanks to magic, those around them see it in its old form. Long is genuinely surprised by Chu's spirit pet's fighting skills. 
not understanding how Chu was able to train his beast so quickly. Long has not yet used all the combat capabilities of his werewolf, he has a couple of surprises in store. To achieve victory, Long's spirit pet activates raging bloodlust. Katana decides that the only way to help him in this situation is to effectively use his camouflage skill. The werewolf hits Katana with his huge paw, but at that moment the fox uses his skill and disappears. Only Chu remains on the battlefield, who stands opposite the werewolf, who intends to attack the guy. Chu is very nervous, and he realizes what a deadly trap he has fallen into. The werewolf pounces on Chu and knocks him to the ground. The guy struggles to hold on to the beast. Long senses an approaching victory and orders his spirit pet to destroy the guy. The roar and clanking of the werewolf's jaws are heard. Chu is trying with his last strength to restrain the hellish beast. Katana comes out of stealth mode and activates the haunting skill to aid its owner. The werewolf notices Katana approaching, however he is unable to react as Chu is holding his paws tightly. The darkness of the night is illuminated by a bright flash. Katana, using an energy beam, blows off the head of the werewolf. The silence is broken by Long's loud cry, full of despair and fear. The guy cannot believe the death of his powerful pet. Long comes to his senses and runs as fast as he can towards the bushes in the hope of escape. Chu rises from the ground with a sharp movement. He orders Katana to pursue the fleeing Long. In the silence of the night, Long's loud cry is heard, and a flock of alarmed birds rises into the sky. Katana jumps into Chu's arms. Friends rejoice at the victory in a difficult night battle. Chu opens a portal to a parallel dimension to send Katana to her well-deserved rest. Suddenly, Chu feels severe pain in his chest. He cannot breathe and gradually begins to suffocate. A heartbreaking scream is heard. A nightmare materializes in front of Chu, who stretches out his huge hands to the guy. The guy falls to the ground. Terrible convulsions paralyze his body, and he begins to lose consciousness. Chu concentrates all his strength and decides not to panic. He is trying to escape from the captivity of the nightmare. Listening to the roar of a nightmare, the guy comes to the conclusion that today is not the day to die. The nightmare does not loosen its grip, and with its huge fingers tightly squeezes the guy's neck. Chu concentrates extremely hard in order to restore his spiritual strength and escape from captivity. The nightmare gradually begins to consume the guy. Chu does not have enough strength to resist the demon. He screams loudly, almost losing consciousness, but continues to accumulate spiritual strength and resist the nightmare. The nightmare demon opens its huge mouth in which one can see the gates to the hellish abyss. He intends to drink the soul of Chu. The guy begins to be sucked into a huge glowing funnel. Chu understands that in this situation only the concentration of magical energy and prayers of protection will help him. A small forest bird landing on the guy's chest brings Chu to consciousness. Its melodious singing calms him. He stands up abruptly, comes fully to his senses and wonders what he's doing here and how long he's been unconscious. Sharply turning his head from side to side, the guy tries to gather his thoughts and piece together the picture of what happened. Chu comes to the conclusion that the reason for his miraculous salvation is yesterday's trophy, which he acquired in the fight. The guy returns home in an excellent mood. He dreams of how nice it would be to have a large number of saving fire crystals in stock. He makes complex mathematical calculations based on the pet's functional data and the time periods required to obtain magic crystals. Inspired by the huge hypothetical profit, the guy runs home in a joyful mood, surprising passers-by with his behavior. The monk on duty reports to the senior monk Cow about the night's incident, saying that a group of novices has been found destroyed in the central part of the island. The monk on duty reports that as a result of the investigation, it became known that the group was destroyed by a person. Senior monk Cow abruptly interrupts his meditation. He turns to the monk on duty and expresses his displeasure. Chow is very upset because he does not know how to explain such an emergency to the chief master. The monk on duty assumes that the monastery will face a severe reprimand and a cut in funding. He says that as a result of the investigation, the first suspect has emerged, who is a new novice named Chu. The monk continues his analysis, expressing the opinion that perhaps a stranger has appeared on the island, since it is unlikely that the frail guy could cope with a large combat group. The senior monk Chow orders all possible options to be considered and gives the command to announce the general formation of the monastery novices. The formation of personnel takes place in the courtyard of the monastery. 
The novices listen attentively to the speech of the senior monk Cao. The senior monk Cao announces to those present that a hostile stranger has entered the island, so the certification is postponed until tomorrow. Chu is very upset by this news, his sole pet being unable to recover in such a short period of time. Head monk Cao orders everyone to return to their barracks, telling the novices to enjoy their last day of their lives. This statement causes great excitement in the novices, based on a feeling of deep fear. Suddenly, Chu receives a sharp blow that knocks him down. The guy falls hard to the ground. Gutson approaches him with aggressive intentions, who intends to take revenge on the guy. Gutson tells Chu that he hopes to meet him in a duel tomorrow, which will put everything in its place. Chu realizes that his soul pet will not be able to recover until tomorrow to fight such a serious opponent. The certification begins. The judging group of monks reads out the rules of the fights, in which opponents are selected based on lot. Senior monk Cao informs the novices that the fights will continue until there are ten contenders left. Senior monk Cao takes the first tablet out of the box and reads out the name of the fighter. The first contender will be Gutsin. There is a wave of uncertainty and anxiety running through the ranks of the contenders. No one wants to be the opponent of a powerful fighter. Gutsin stands in the middle of the arena, arms crossed over his chest, his face expressing confidence and serenity. Gutsin looks at Chu carefully. He hopes that the lot will fall on his enemy. The monk slowly takes out the next lot card from the box, and an ominous silence reigns in the arena. Chu listens carefully to the monk's voice. It seems to the guy that time has stopped, and the monk has been reading out the lot for an eternity. The senior monk, Cao, pronounces the opponent's name Gutsin, who will be a novice named Jiang. Those around him sigh with relief. They cannot hide their joy that the lot has passed them by. Jiang's body begins to shake. He is seized with wild horror as he realizes how strong the enemy will resist him. Jiang's voice is heard. The guy screams that he doesn't want to die. He is trying to escape. Such a reaction from the guy causes the senior monk to burst into laughter. He considers such actions to be naive stupidity. The monks activate their battle pets, and the hellish guard wolves rush in pursuit of the fugitive. Jiang runs towards the open gates of the monastery, intending to take refuge in the nearby forest. His attempt to escape does not lead to success. The hellish guard wolves are too fast and strong. They destroy the guy in a matter of seconds. Senior monk Cao says that anyone who decides to do such an act will face severe punishment. He points to the hellish guard wolf, who is dragging Jiang's lifeless body. The challengers silently listen to the senior monk Cao. They have resigned themselves to their unenviable fate. Gutson did not have to engage in a duel. He rejoices in the fact that he is credited with a technical victory. Gutson elbows Chu and tells him that the guy should thank fate for the fact that the lot did not fall on him. Chu leaves. A rush of strong rage fills him. He hopes that sooner or later he will be able to take revenge on Gutson for his behavior. Passing the certification reveals the strongest and most successful applicants. The number of novices in the monastery decreases every hour. The fate of the losers is unenviable. The surviving aspirants after the battles are carried away by the monks to be fed to the hellish wolves. The monk is about to announce the participants in the next battle. He takes out an envelope with a name from the box. The monk reads out the name of the next participant in the certification. He is the novice Chu. The guy listens carefully to the monk's voice to hear the name of his opponent. For the next fight, Chu's opponent is Hung, who is a good friend of Ting. The information that her opponent would be Chu greatly amused the girl. Ting cannot understand such a reaction. She attributes it to the shock that all certification participants are subject to. Hung shows off in front of his friend, telling her that she will soon have to look for a new roommate. Ting is surprised by the girl's statement. She believes that it is Hung who will lose in today's fight. Ting watches the departing girl. She mentally says goodbye to her, as she believes that she is seeing her for the last time. The bitterness of disappointment fills Ting. She believes that the world in which she lives is terrible and unfair. The gong sounds, signaling the start of the battle, and the opponents stand in the battle arena, glaring at each other. Hung tells the guy that she knows he has a weak spirit pet. She intends to win an easy victory. Chu is quite tired of the comments of others about his spiritual pet. He considers them fools who do not see the enormous potential of his beast. Hung apologizes to the guy, telling him that she has no personal grudge. She is forced to fight to save her life. Hung activates the spirit pet contract seal to summon his beast. The girl smiles in anticipation of a quick victory. 
Chu carefully watches her magical manipulations. With a sharp movement of his hand, the guy throws a sharp combat blade in the direction of Hung. The girl does not have time to react to the lightning throw and repel the deadly attack. Her quiet wheezing is heard. Chu approaches the defeated opponent, bends over the girl, and asks her forgiveness for what she has done. The people around do not hide their dissatisfaction with what is happening, since there was a gross violation of the rules. The monks have not encountered such a situation before. They turn to the senior monk Chow for advice. The senior monk Cao likes Chu's behavior. He is pleased with the composure and cunning with which the guy approached the duel. Chow proposes, as an exception, not to punish the guy, but warns that in the future any violations of the monastery's combat regulations will be strictly punished. Chu passes by the rest of the applicants. They are very surprised by the actions of the guy who decided to play against the rules. Chu thinks that the time gained will be enough to restore the strength of his soul pet. Ting does not hide his disappointment in the guy, having learned in practice that appearances are deceiving. The next morning comes, the number of certification participants has greatly decreased. The participants lined up in the battle arena. They are looking forward to the start of the fights. Despite his disappointments yesterday, Ting hopes that Chu will be lucky and stay alive. Chu's thoughts are occupied with his soul pet, who was only able to recover to 50%. The head monk of Chao announces to the participants that the final battle will take place today, and the winners will be given the opportunity to leave the island. Chu is determined to win the final fight and hopes to leave the Island of Nightmares. His opponent is Gessen, who declares his intentions to tear the spirit pet Chu apart and then deal with the guy. Ting tells the guy not to get too excited, since Chu has already had many arrogant opponents on his way who ended badly. The girl standing behind Ting is interested in her attention to Chu and asks if she has fallen in love. Gessen summons his spirit pet, a huge swamp lizard which towers before him. With the help of a magical spirit pet pact, Chu materializes Katana. Ting looks closely at Katana. She believes that his combat power has not yet fully recovered. The girl reacts sharply to snide remarks about the combat characteristics of the spirit pet Chu. A huge swamp lizard rushes to attack. The earth trembles under the blows of its huge paws. Katana, taking advantage of her speed, deftly dodges the swamp lizard and goes behind its back. The Swamp Lizard strikes with colossal force, but its slowness prevents it from hitting the Katana. Those around him watch the fight with enthusiasm. They are amazed at Katana's agility and reaction. The huge Swamp Lizard has colossal physical strength, but it does not have a quick reaction. Gessen scolds his pet for his slowness and tells him that his opponent is behind him. Advantages in speed allow Katana to maneuver on the battlefield with impunity. Gessen demands his spirit pet to immediately deal with Katana, taking advantage of the colossal advantages of physical strength. Chu bides his time, realizing that the opponent's soul pet will soon tire. Katana receives a command from its owner to activate the obsession skill. It transforms into a huge, powerful beast, maintaining its original appearance. The large swamp lizard was very tired, having spent all its strength on ineffective attacks. Katana uses the charm skill to put her opponent to sleep. Gessen sees that his spirit pet has fallen under Katana's magical spell. He demands the swamp lizard to resist. Gessen's loud cry is heard. The guy warns his pet about the need to come to his senses in order to stay alive. Chu decides the time has come and commands Katana to destroy the large swamp lizard. With a trained strike, Katana delivers a crushing blow to the swamp lizard, with Gessen's spirit pet having no time to react. A loud roar is heard, and a large swamp lizard falls to the ground with a roar, raising huge clouds of dust. Gessen experiences severe shock. He cannot believe the death of his pet. The monks drag Gessen to be devoured by the evil guard wolves. The guy silently resigns himself to his fate. The head monk of Cao announces that eleven students remain during the certification process. Chow continues his speech and says that according to the rules of the island, only ten people can survive. The certification participants exchange anxious glances with each other. Today will be the last day for one of them. Gutson turns to the head monk. He reports that his opponent was killed yesterday by Cao, and he did not have to fight a single round. Gutson expresses his desire to fight Chu. He says that the loser will be eliminated, thereby maintaining the rule of ten. The guy expects to win the fight, since the spiritual pet Chu did not recover from the previous fight and was injured. Chu did not expect such a turn of events. He hears caustic remarks from others that this is a good offer. 
Chu intends to put an end to Gutsen once and for all. He is tired of the potential threat in the face of this rival. The guy tells Gutsen that if he wants to die today, he will gladly fulfill his wish. Gutsen makes sarcastic jokes at the guy, trying to intimidate Chu before the fight. Chu does not react to empty threats. He has made a firm decision and intends to see it through to the end. Senior Monk Cao announces the start of the fight. He hopes for a spectacular final battle of certification. A loud drumbeat sounds and the senior cow monk solemnly announces the start of the duel. Gutsen summons his spirit pet. The huge snake assumes a fighting stance. Chu activates the spirit pet contract. He hopes that luck will be on their side today. Katana materializes in front of the guy. He is full of determination and ready to start a mortal battle. Gutsen throws his soul pet into the attack. He orders it to use the scaled serpent technique. Katana activates her fighting skills. Chu's voice is heard calling for the destruction of the filthy reptile. Spirit Pet Gutsen strikes with its huge tail. The katana's speed allows it to come back. Chu tells Katana to fight from a distance, as there is a danger that the snake will use chokes. Katana listens to Chu's advice. This saves his life. Gutsen's Spirit Pet was unable to implement his chokehold. Pet Gutsen tries to strike with a poisonous spike, which is located at the tip of its tail. Katana anticipates the enemy's actions and jumps to the side in time, taking a more advantageous position for itself. It's Katana's turn to counterattack. The northern fox waits for the moment to unleash all his hidden power on his opponent. Spiritual Pet Gutsen has a lot of experience in combat. He does not fuss and waits for the attack to begin. Gutsen believes that it is time to use the strongest skills of his soul pet. He gives the command to use combat poisons. The snake spews a huge lump of deadly poison, which flies towards Katana at incredible speed. Spiritual Pet Chu manages to dodge the poison flying at him, but some drops fall on his tail. Drops of poison that fall on Katana's tail cause a severe burn and begin to penetrate the pet's body. Katana is unable to attack. He squeaks loudly. The wound causes him great pain. Opening its huge, poisonous mouth, the snake, taking advantage of the moment, rushes at Katana. At the last moment, Chu's spirit pet manages to dodge the blow of the snake's tail. Katana, with the help of her sharp claws, delivers a sharp blow to Gutsen's spirit pet. Spiritual pet Chu cannot withstand the stress of the battle and jumps towards the guy. Katana jumps onto Chu's shoulder. He feels very tired and scared. Spiritual pet Chu's paws are seriously injured. He cannot continue the battle effectively. Using the scaly serpent technique proved to be very effective, Katana was unable to penetrate the defense with his claws. Gutsen tells his pet that the time for games has passed. The moment of triumphant victory has come. Spirit Pet Gutsen concentrates to deliver a final poison attack. Like a pendulum, it begins to swing to the sides, hypnotizing its victim. Those present chant loudly. They are inspired by the graceful dance of a huge snake. Ting is no longer able to contain her emotions. She urges the guy to immediately flee. Chu calms his pet down, telling him it's time to use new skills. Katana jumps from the guy's arms and begins to quickly approach the huge snake. The wounds on Katana's tail have almost completely healed, and a dense energy defense begins to cover his body. Deftly dodging the poisonous spit of the large serpent, Katana confidently approaches her opponent. Gutsen hopes that no amount of trickery will help him avoid his spirit pet's final poisonous attack. The distance between the opponents quickly decreases. The huge snake opens its poisonous mouth. Katana effectively uses her new split skill to confuse her opponent. The huge snake decides that the distance is enough for a decisive throw and suddenly jumps forward. Ting watches in horror as Katana's attack fails. Chu's soul pet unable to dodge the huge snake. Chu is not at all worried about Katana's mistake. He asks the girl why Katana has to dodge. A second before being absorbed by the huge snake, Katana activated his unique new skill. A chilling roar is heard as spirit pet Gutsen absorbs the katana. The huge snake is pleased with its victory. It proudly rises tens of meters into the air. Gutsen cannot contain his joy. He orders his soul pet to immediately destroy Chu. Gutsen's loud cry is heard. The guy conveys to everyone that he is the most powerful fighter on the island of nightmares. Suddenly, the huge snake begins to feel discomfort. Something is moving inside its hood. A strong explosion occurs, blowing a huge snake to pieces, but Katana turns out to be completely unharmed. Spirit Pet Gutsen is defeated. A satisfied Katana stands on top of the defeated enemy, letting out a loud howl. The monks watching the battle were very surprised by what was happening. 
They did not expect such an outcome of the fight. Not only the monks, but also the novices watching the fight experience great surprise. Chu, with undisguised pleasure, orders Katana to eliminate Gutsen. The Katana takes great joy in obeying its owner's command and quickly gains speed to strike. Spiritual pet Chu jumps into the air and strikes the opponent with its paw. Gutsen is overcome by a wild feeling of fear. His loud death cry is heard. The defeated enemy falls to the ground with a roar. The battle arena is filled with enthusiastic exclamations from those around him. The voice of the senior monk Tao is heard, who says that the body of the loser should be immediately removed from the arena. Chu sends his spirit pet to the fourth dimension for rest and restoration. The senior monk Cao admires the fighting abilities of the spiritual pet Chu. He hopes that the guy will take his rightful place among the best fighters on the island of nightmares. Senior monk Cao wonders how Chu was able to train his spirit pet so quickly. Suddenly, Cao asks Chu if he is involved in the murders in the central part of the island. The surviving novices believe that Chu is involved in the destruction of the students. Senior monk Cao intends to interrogate Chu. He uses a powerful mental attack against the guy. Chu adequately resists the elder monk's mental attack. Cao cannot penetrate the guy's thoughts. The head monk demands that Chu answer his questions immediately. Otherwise, he threatens to burn his brain. Chu experiences a severe headache as tendrils of mental energy penetrate his brain. The guy persistently asks the senior monk Cao to immediately stop the mental attack. Chao says that he will give the guy one last chance if he tells him the whole truth. Chu can no longer endure the unbearable pain. He tells the senior monk that he is not involved in the murders in the central part of the island. Chu tells his spirit pet that he is fine and asks him not to leave him from the fourth dimension. The senior monk does not believe in the guy's sincerity. He intends to incinerate his brain. The monks ask Cao to stop. They tell him that there are only ten students left and the death of one of them will be perceived negatively by the chief master. The chief monk of Cao does not want to suffer the wrath of the chief master and stops the mental attack. Chao leaves those present in deep dissatisfaction. He informs them of the arrival of the ship in three days. The monks discuss Cao's behavior. They are surprised that they have never seen him in such an irritated state before. One of the monks suggests that Chu has great prospects and the chief master may pay attention to him. The monks have an assumption that the chief master may make Chu a senior monk, which could lead to the elimination of Cao due to its uselessness. The monks agree that if there is an attempt to kill Chu, they will protect him. They rely on their own strength, but if necessary, they will turn to the chief master for help. Chu sits on the edge of a cliff, peering into the endless space. He pronounces complex, meditative mantras. Chu invites his faithful spiritual pet Katana to share the trophies obtained in unequal battles. He gives Katana some of the magical soul crystals with the fire attribute to increase his strength, and also a part of the soul crystals with the attribute of the beast for quick restoration of strength and healing of wounds. Chu is confident that using these crystals together will greatly enhance Katana's combat abilities. Katana consumes the magical soul crystals, his body ignites, and the transformation process begins. Chu is very worried about what is happening. Katana completely disappears in the magical flame. After a short period of time, Katana appears in front of its owner in an updated form. The transformation was successful, and spiritual pet Chu moved to the second level. The guy rejoices at the changes that have occurred, which have led to an improvement in the combat characteristics of his pet. Suspicious sounds are heard in the dark night forest. Chu turns towards the thicket and wonders who it could be. A short search leads Chu and Katana to a tall tree on which there is a huge bat. A loud squeak is heard, breaking the silence of the night forest. A huge bat begins to fly around the guy. Chu is surprised by the strange behavior of a huge bat, which continues to persistently circle around him. Suddenly, the bat attacks the guy with his powerful sonic weapon. Katana manages to jump to the side in time, avoiding dangerous acoustic waves. Acoustic waves hit the ground, causing a huge explosion, pieces of soil flying in different directions. The treacherous attack of the flying predator greatly angered Katana, and he intends to teach his ill-wisher a lesson. Katana uses her fiery energy skill against the bat, incinerating the night predator with plasma beams. Chu is excited to use his spirit pet's new skills and hopes that further transformations will make him even more powerful and stronger. Katana is grateful for his owner's care for him. He intends to protect and protect the guy. 
Chu considers tonight to be a special night as his soul pet has gained additional attributes of a beast. At dawn, a large sailing ship moored to the monastery pier. The chief monk of Cao, accompanied by his novices, heads aboard the sailing ship. Chow tells those present that they are now all full members of the Monastery of Nightmares, and as a gift, they are given a short trip. The new candidates for monks are very happy about the upcoming journey. Chu does not share their joy. He gloomily looks at the waves rushing onto the shore. A strong flow of air fills the sails of the ship. It begins its journey to distant shores. Chu did not expect the strong impact of pumping on his body. He has a hard time enduring such tests. Seasickness causes the guy a lot of suffering. Ting sympathizes with the guy but cannot help him in any way. Using a telescope, the monk on duty closely monitors the students on the ship. He shouts to the young people standing by the side and orders them to move away from the side since there are many ferocious aggressive creatures in the sea. Shadows moving from the bottom attract the guy's attention and suddenly his physical ailments fade into the background. A huge python shark suddenly jumps out of the water and rushes at the guy, Chu barely has time to jump off the side. While escaping, the guy does not forget about Ting. He pushes the girl away from the edge of the side and covers her with his body. The monk on duty is amazed at the carelessness and stupidity of the monastery's novices. A huge school of python sharks surrounds the ship, and every minute there are more and more of them. Sea predators begin their attack. With a powerful blow of their tail, one of the sharks damages the sail of the ship. Python sharks take turns jumping out of the water, trying to grab the novices and purposefully destroy the ship. The chief monk of Cao orders everyone to leave the deck and hide in the ship's cabins. The python shark opens its huge toothy mouth and rushes towards the elder Cao monk. The senior monk Cao manages to dodge. The shark continues its attack, striking the monk with its tail. Chao curses rudely, sending a curse at the sea predator, wishing him a terrible death and torture. Distracted, the elder monk does not notice the attack of a nearby shark, which wraps its body around him and drags him into the water. The monks notice what is happening. They scream heart-rendingly, unable to help their commander. An aggressive python shark throws the cow elder monk off the deck of the ship and drags him underwater. Chow completely disappears underwater. Only air bubbles and huge bloodstains are visible on the surface. A huge column of water rises from the water. The monks carefully watch what is happening, they are very surprised by the phenomenon they see. At the very top of a huge column of water stands the senior monk Chow, holding a sharp long blade in his hand. With the help of his weapons and excellent fencing techniques, the elder monk was able to defeat the python shark in underwater combat. Chow jumps from a multimeter column of water and gracefully lands on the deck of the ship. The senior monk begins to recite a powerful mantra, calling on the spirit of water, he intends to destroy all sea creatures. The water around the ship boils. A huge water demon emerges from the abyss of the sea, and his wild laughter can be heard. The water demon rises tens of meters into the air and inspects the surrounding space around the ship. Using his magical power over sea creatures, the water spirit makes short work of the python sharks. The sharks realize that they cannot resist the water demon and try to escape. The senior monk Cao does not want to let them leave. He intends to destroy all aggressive predators. Suddenly, a huge barrier appears in front of the fleeing sea creatures in the form of a multimeter ice wall. The sea spirit sees that the python sharks are trapped and have no way to escape. He quickly approaches them. The fate of the remnants of a school of python sharks is unenviable. The sea spirit deals with the sea predators in a matter of seconds. The monks admire the sea spirit's fighting abilities and thank Cao for saving them. The senior monk announces that the threat has been eliminated. He invites the novices to calm down and continue their exciting journey. Chu watches the elder monk carefully. He realizes that Chao's pets have a high combat level. Chu is impatiently waiting for the ship to arrive at its destination port. He has almost no strength left to endure bouts of seasickness. The guy shouts joyfully. He informs those around him that he sees the earth. The ship is approaching a huge archipelago, on the shores of which there is a large city, surrounded by greenery. Monks and novices gather on the deck of the ship. They enjoy watching the mysterious city illuminated by the setting rays of the sun. The streets of the city consist of numerous houses that lead to the main temple, located at the foot of a large mountain. The ship moored to the shore. The monks and novices are about to go ashore. The chief monk of Cao and the monastery's minions head into the city center. 
they take a close look at the large, well-kept buildings surrounding them. The monk informs Chu that the best students are rewarded with regular trips to neighboring islands and the mainland. Women with low social responsibility attract passers-by. The senior monk Cao succumbs to their charms. He stops and carefully examines the women. The monks whisper among themselves, discussing the behavior of the senior monk and expressing their value judgment. The senior monk Chao is very tired of serving in the monastery. He is overcome by a great desire to live the life of a simple layman. The monk's displeased gaze is directed at Cao, strongly disapproving of his behavior and thoughts. The monk informs the students that in a few days he will lead them to the Palace of Nightmares, where they can fight with representatives of other islands. He hopes that many of the disciples will reach high combat level soon. Chu is upset by the appearance of the house they came to. He has suspicions that this house will become their temporary home. Monk Gu Feng informs those present that this house will be their new home and everyone will have their own room. Gu Feng gives each student one gold coin to purchase basic necessities. Chu is glad to have a gold coin. He intends to buy magic herbs at the market to improve his pet's fighting skills. For several hours, Chu wanders the labyrinthine streets of the big city, looking for an herbal market or a specialty store. Quite a lot of time passes. Chu cannot find the store he needs. He realizes that he is lost. The guy's thoughts are interrupted by the smell of a magic potion. Chu believes that he is moving in the right direction. The guy follows the magical scent until he comes to a small herbalist's shop located at the dead end of an inconspicuous street. Chu goes inside a dimly lit room filled with the aroma of magical herbs and potions. An elderly man sits at the table, busy preparing medicinal herbs. Chu greets the elderly man and asks if he has sky blue grass. The herbalist stops manipulating with herbs. He sees his new client in the guy and informs him that he has sky blue herb in stock. The herbalist sets a price of two gold coins for one portion of the herb, but Chu only has one coin in stock. The elderly man is extremely dissatisfied with the guy's solvency and tells him that his store is intended only for rich clients. The herbalist suggests that Chu leave the store immediately and look for his herbs elsewhere. The guy offers to pay for the magical herbs with the fragments of his soul. An elderly man is interested in such a proposal and carefully evaluates the fragments of the soul. He comes to the conclusion that they do not belong to this island. The herbalist offers a maximum of one silver coin and five copper coins for three soul shards. Chu thinks this is a small price to pay, but the herbalist insists and is not going to pay more. The guy bargains with the elderly man, demanding that he increase the price for the soul cores. The herbalist claims that he offered a good price since he buys soul cores at the highest prices in the city. The herbalist offers the guy to buy his soul cores on an ongoing basis. Chu is extremely interested in such an offer. The elderly man says that the highest price he will pay is for the soul cores mined in the mountain forest in the south of the city. Chu goes to the southern region of the forest to obtain the required number of soul cores. He cannot shake off a bad feeling. Walking quietly through the tall grass, Chu and Katana head towards the side of a large mountain. A loud crash is heard. The guy in the dark does not notice the large bone he is stepping on. At the same moment, Chu and Katana are surrounded by a huge group of mysterious creatures. With their burning eyes, they look at the uninvited guests. In a cozy house on the outskirts of the city, despite the late hour, there are bright lights in the windows. Master Lujen receives his dear friend, an old friend. At a richly set table, they drink beer and have intimate conversations. After drinking another glass of beer, Master Lujen hits the table hard with his empty mug. Master Lujen tells his friend that he is always ready to help him in any life situation. The head monk of Cao asks him for one favor, which is to kill one guy who works for Cao in a battle in a few days. In a state of intoxication, Cao loosened his tongue and talks about how the guy secretly destroyed his close servants. Master Luzhen is very surprised by the capabilities of the guy who was able to cope with three strong opponents alone. Chao tells Master Lu Jin that there is no reason to worry, since the guy's soul pet is just a small northern fox. Master Lu Jin makes a promise to the chief monk Cao that his people will easily cope with this problem. The herbalist from the store drinks aromatic tea, thinking that two days have passed since Chu's visit, and the guy still hasn't appeared. Suddenly, loud sounds of doors opening are heard, and Chu appears at the threshold of the store. The herbalist instantly breaks out of his thoughts and looks at the guy in surprise. Chu's appearance greatly strikes him. The guy heads to the herbalist, 
His clothes are badly torn, and traces of numerous wounds are visible on Chu's body. The guy casually places a huge package on the store counter and asks the herbalist to pay him. The herbalist unwraps Chu's torn shirt, which contains a huge amount of soul cores. Carefully sorting through the soul cores, the herbalist estimates their cost. He is very surprised that the guy was able to obtain so many soul cores and stay alive. The herbalist tells the guy that he is the first in the last two years who managed to obtain such a huge number of soul cores in two days. Chu tells the herbalist that he is ready to purchase the sky blue herb from him and accept the rest of the payment in the form of gold coins, which he plans to use to buy potions in other places. The herbalist tries to stop the guy, telling him that he has almost all the herbs and minerals that could be useful to him. The herbalist manages to persuade Chu and accompanies him to a secret room where countless potions and magical artifacts are stored in cabinets. With the help of a secret lock, the door to a secret room is opened. The herbalist says that he shows these treasures only to special clients. Chu strongly doubts the old man's sincerity. He considers him to be an ordinary, crooked businessman. The guy enters the room. What he sees greatly affects him. He is speechless and freezes in place. The secret room contains powerful magical artifacts and a huge amount of herbs and tinctures. The herbalist tells the guy that he has a huge number of magical manuscripts that may be useful to Chu in the future. Chu asks the old man to sell him a quick freezing technique. The old man appreciates the guy's decision. The herbalist pays the guy with his goods. He is pleased that he did not have to part with his gold coins. Chu says goodbye to the old man and leaves holding in his hands the manuscript of the quick freezing technique and sky blue grass. The voice of the herbalist is heard asking the guy to stop. Chu turns around in surprise and looks at the old man. The herbalist throws a large jar of Chu remedy and says that the guy deserves it. Chu carefully examines the remedy. He informs the old man that he has run out of money. The herbalist replies that it is a gift. He likes Chu's potential and invites him to come in the future if he needs anything. Chu, in good spirits, heads to the guest courtyard where his squad is located. He raises his eyes, looking at the building, and stops abruptly. What he sees puts him in a state of shock. Looking at the terrible view of the guest courtyard, the guy tries to understand what could have happened here. Chu calls upon his spirit pet, and they cautiously begin to approach the half-open front doors. The guy approaches the front door, peers into the small gap, trying to find out what is happening inside. Chu observes Ting and other members of his squad inside who look very downcast. The guy enters the room and asks Ting about what happened here and where the other students are. Ting tells Chu that the local fighters found out that they had soul cores, and after refusing to give up the soul cores, the local fighters started a fight. The guy complains about Chu. He says that he was not there during a difficult time for the team. Chu asks those present about the rules of the competition, to which they answer that the participants will fight in teams. Chu goes to his room, telling those present that they have nothing to worry about as they have a great chance of winning the tournament. The guy reacts strongly to Chu's behavior, considering him to be an overly selfish person. Chu tells the guy that there is no reason to worry, since he intends to take revenge on the offenders for the insults caused in the arena. It's very cold in the guest house where the Chu squad is staying and the students can't sleep. Huge icicles hang from the ceilings of the rooms, and the bitter cold permeates all the interiors of the building. The reason for the terrible cold is that Chu has perfected the technique of fast freezing. Chu has learned the quick freezing technique quite well and is very pleased with his skills. Morning comes, the city's main sports arena is ready for the upcoming competitions. Chow's senior monk's party heads to the sports arena. He orders his students not to look up under any circumstances. At the top of the throne is the master of the main island. Below him are the masters of the neighboring islands. The master of the main island comes to the conclusion that the Chow team is a bunch of useless people. The senior monk Cao makes excuses to the island's chief master, informing him that several strong fighters died in an accident. The master of the neighboring island tells Cao that he has come up with a very interesting excuse. The senior monk Cao stands in front of the throne of the main master of the island. Behind him the loud laughter of the masters of the neighboring islands can be heard. A loud voice announces the start of the tournament. The teams of senior monk Cao and master Goman will be the first to fight. A guy from the Chu squad recognizes the Goman master's team as his yesterday's offenders who attacked the hotel courtyard. Master Goman's team enters the arena. 
They show confidence in themselves and look at the Chu squad with contempt. Team leader Master Gomen motivates his group by claiming that the Cow Squad are weaklings who pose no threat to them. The Cow Squad guy encourages his comrades to put aside their fear and work together to win. Both teams begin to summon their spirit pets, and fearsome animals appear in the arena. Ting intends to use a flower demon as his soul pet. The Chu Squad features powerful battle pets such as the scaly armored beast. Master Gomen's team has wind demons and a huge poisonous tooth monster. The leader of Master Goman's team can't help but laugh. He believes that his pets are much stronger and more powerful than the enemy's soul pets. Chu discusses the tactics of the upcoming battle with his squad. They are going to effectively use all their capabilities. The battle begins, and the spirit pets of the opposing teams take up fighting positions. Wasting no time, Katana takes advantage of her speed advantage and charges at her opponent's soul pet. The enemy's spirit pet takes several hits from the katana and disappears from the battlefield. Master Goman's squad leader asks his subordinate about the reason for recalling his soul pet. The commander of Master Goman's squad does not accept any explanations. He calls the guy a coward and demands that the battle immediately continue. The battle continues. The spiritual pets, using their skills, systematically destroy each other. Chu orders his squad not to panic and continue to hold back the enemy's pressure. Katana jumps high in the air, attempting to strike Team Goman's main soul pet. The Katana's strike is blocked, but the northern forest leaps away from the huge armored beast and strikes the enemy's pet standing nearby. The enemy's spirit pet is destroyed by Katana, surprising the chief master and the masters of the neighboring islands. The Goman team commander gives orders to destroy the Katana first. The huge armored beast forms a ball and moves towards Katana at great speed. The Northern Forest is trying to escape from an armored beast rushing towards it at great speed. The Chu squad is pleased with the start of the battle, and confidence in victory appears in the ranks of the students. Ting commands his spirit pet to use its poisonous throwing spines. Poisonous throwing thorns are unable to harm the armored beast. The spirit pets of the Chu squad come to the aid of the flower demon. The Chu squad's soul pet is trying its best to hold off the enemy's armored beast. He wraps his huge paws around him and headbutts him in an attempt to break through his defenses. The Ting spirit pet continues to shower the opponent with its poisonous spines. The flower demon binds Team Goman's armored beast with its strong vines. The Goman team leader remains calm, considering such attacks harmless to his armored beast. The armor of Team Goman's spirit pet cannot withstand the load and begins to gradually deteriorate. The Goman team commander is furious. He does not understand how weak pets can resist his high-level beast. Chu orders not to stop the attack and destroy the spirit pet of the Goman squad leader. The spirit pet of the Goman squad leader is defeated. His wild roar is heard and he falls to the ground. Master Goman's team leader sends a curse at Chu and his team. He orders his subordinates to continue the attack and summon the wind demon to the battlefield. A Goman master's team fighter activates the magical seal of the pet treaty. A wind demon appears in the arena and generates a huge whirlwind around itself. The tornado quickly begins to approach the Chu squad, destroying everything in its path. The air funnel captures the flower demon Ting. He is unable to resist the enemy. Katana is unable to reflect the enemy's air energy. He is knocked down by the airflow and sucked into the funnel. Chu squad struggles to stay on their feet. Chu blocks the enormous force of the wind and informs his comrades that the demon has not yet reached its final stage. Chu tries to calm his spirit pet and encourages him to go through the deadly vortex. Chu's connection with the spirit pet is unstable, but the guy does not stop trying to establish a spiritual connection with Katana. The northern forest hears Chu, but he is unable to withstand the strong air current. Using incredible mental effort, Katana activates the second level and jumps out of the air current of the vortex. The Chu team reacts enthusiastically to Katana's rapid transition to the second level. Ting is surprised by Katana's rapid transition to the next level. The northern forest enters the attack line and begins to quickly run towards the enemy soul pet. The wind demon realizes the mortal threat and tries to move to a safe distance as quickly as possible. The owner of the wind demon calls on his team to help his spirit pet, since he has no melee skills. Chu Squad continues to dominate the battlefield, systematically defeating the enemy soul pets. Chu sees that Katana is close enough to the wind demon and orders the enemy to be destroyed. Katana delivers a series of sharp blows, destroys the wind demon and lets out a victorious howl. 
From the heights of the stands of the sports arena, you can feel the enormous scale of the grandiose battle. The master of the neighboring islands tells Cow that Chu has good training and magical powers. For the senior monk Cow, it is an unexpected surprise that Katana has moved to the second level. Chow explains to the master of the neighboring island that Chu is a capable guy who learns quickly. The master of the neighboring island tells Cow that his team is much better than the bunch of losers from the Goman master's team. They both laugh loudly and agree that Master Goman's team has no chance of winning. A loud voice echoes across the sports arena, announcing the victory of the Cow Senior Monk's team. Chu and his team are happy with the results of the battle. They intend to win the Champions Cup. The guy tells Chu that he used to doubt his abilities, but after the fight he changed his mind. He asks Chu why his soul pet hasn't changed in appearance even though he has advanced to the second level. Chu explains to the guy that this is a magical trick that misleads opponents. A student from Chu's squad intends to find out from the guy what combat level his spiritual pet is at. Chu, flirting with a girl, asks her to guess the katana's combat skill level. Ting notices their conversation and is extremely unhappy with Chu's style of communication. With the help of an energetic connection, Chu senses strong changes that have occurred in his spirit pet. The battle allowed Katana to improve her fighting skills and increase her magic level. The guy is surprised by this fact. He did not expect that the transformation of Katana would happen so quickly. Chu realizes that his pet is capable of fearlessly attacking opponents at a higher level. Master Lu Zhen's team prepares for the upcoming battle by performing a joint magical prayer. Master Goman's losing team is in a state of disappointment and despair. Chief Monk Cao reminds Master Lu Zhen of his recent request. Master Lu Zhen invites Cao to go down to the battlefield and observe the actions of his team directly in the battle. Master Lu Zhen's team enters the arena and begins summoning their spiritual pets. Those present are surprised by the level of the spirit pets of Master Lu Zhen's team, since all the beasts are at the second level and above. Team Chu intends to engage in combat, but if threatened, they decide to recall their soul pets. The start of the battle is announced. Ting asks to be given the opportunity to be the first to enter the battle. The flower demon summoned by Ting forms a high protective wall of its thorny shoots. Master Lu Zhen's team is surprised by the cunning tactical maneuver that Ting used to protect her squad. They intend to attack the enemy's defenses and issue commands to their soul pets. Huge shoots of the hell tree are trying to attack the defense of the flower demon summoned by Ting. Master Lu Zhen's team aims to breach the Chu Squad's defenses with the help of a huge mutated creature. The sharp shoots of the Hell Tree strike at the most vulnerable places of the Flower Demon. The spirit pet nearby sees this and intercepts the attacking shoots with its huge paws. In response, the Flower Demon sends a huge swarm of poisonous thorns towards the enemy. Master Lu Zhen's team commands their soul pet to use a whirlwind attack. A huge vortex engulfs Chu Squad's spirit pets causing them to spin around in the air current, preventing them from attacking. The guy from the Chu Squad understands that they need to eliminate the air tornado in order not to be defeated. He summons his faithful spirit pet, a great bald eagle. Master Lu Zhen's team's huge, ferocious soul pet attacks the big bird. The guy is very upset about the death of his beloved spirit pet. The girl tells Ting that the enemy is very strong, and they need to take the spirit pets from the battlefield before it is too late. The Chu Squad admits defeat and activates magical packs to take their pets away. A losing team member mocks the Chu Squad, calling them cowardly losers and scum. His main soul pet holds a destroyed great bald eagle in its mouth. Suddenly a katana appears on the battlefield and with a sharp blow blows the enemy's head off. Master Lu Zhen's team is in a state of shock due to the loss of their main soul pet. A fighter from the Lu Zhen team asks everyone to disperse. He intends to deal with katana. The guy summons a huge energy fire demon to the battlefield. Chu realizes the high level of threat, as the energy demon has more power than the katana. The energy demon shoots blasts of fiery plasma at the katana, the deadly fire gradually surrounding the spirit pet. Clawed paws emerge from the flames of energy fire and try to grab the katana. The northern fox manages to jump away in time, but the energy demon continues its attempts to destroy the fox. Team Luzhen's commander is about to use the energy demon's secret skill. The energy demon captured Katana's shadow using its ability to capture souls. Ting demands Chu admit defeat and take Katana from the battlefield, fearing for his life. Chu watches as the energy demon captures Katana's soul. He makes a decision. Chu activates the magical seal of the pet contract in order to pick up Katana from the game arena. The magical seal of the pet contract disappears. Chu tries to activate it again to no avail. 
Chu tries again and again to activate the seal but does not achieve the desired result. Finding himself in a strong mental field, the guy hears the senior monk Cao saying that today's battle surprised him very much. The senior monk Cao suggests the guy not to stop the battle and continue to enjoy it. Those present watch as the energy demon captures Katana's shadow and holds his soul. Ting notices Chu's strange behavior and asks the guy if he's okay. The senior monk Chao orders the girl to step aside immediately if she does not want to die. The Lu Zhen team fighter is surprised by how long Katana resists the effects of soul capture. The commander of the Lu Zhen team does not intend to waste time and intends to finish off Katana. He orders all the soul pets to attack Katana while the energy demon holds him off. Chu struggles to break free from senior monk Tao's mental field. A huge, bright explosion occurs in the gaming arena. Chu does not understand what could have happened. Squad leader Lu Zhen reports that his pet hit Katana with three fireballs and is now definitely dead. Gradually, the huge clouds of smoke that appeared after the fireballs exploded dissipated. The owner of a pet that can shoot fireballs looks towards the explosion, feeling anxious. He demands that the commander of the Luzhen squad immediately recall the pet named Firetail. Suddenly, an updated katana jumps out of the clouds of smoke and delivers a powerful blow to the fiery tail. The Luzhen team cannot believe how katana was able to survive the huge explosion, and they regret the death of the Firetail. Senior monk Cao realized that the guy could resist even under the influence of his mental field. The present masters from other islands understand that Katana was in camouflage mode, and his combat level is much higher. A fighter from Team Luzhen calls on all pets to immediately attack Katana and destroy him. All of Team Luzhen's soul pets slowly approach and begin to surround Katana. The first to attack Katana is a spirit pet called Grass Demon. Growling loudly, a pet called Hell Rhino joins the Grass Demon's attack. In this top three attackers of the Luzhen team, there is also a soul pet named Red Scorpion. Chu Squad was very worried about Katana and hoped that the fox's combat skills would be enough to repel the attack. Katana launches a furious counterattack knowing he must win or die. Master Lu Zhen's team additionally summons pets named Wind Fairy and Hell Tree into battle. Hellwood shoots huge, muscular shoots at its opponent. The Wind Fairy begins to transform a huge air funnel around itself. Katana, using the skills acquired after moving to a new level, deftly dodges opponent's blows. A fighter from Team Luzhen gets very nervous and curses Katana. Her companion orders the Grass Demon not to hesitate and to continue attacking Katana. The Grass Demon charges at Katana, spinning its leaves to use them as sharp knives. Chu orders Katana to use a combat skill called Shadow. Every second it becomes more and more difficult for the guy to resist the mental attack of the senior monk Cao. Chao hopes that Chu will not be able to resist his mental attack for long. Katana is distracted from the battle and looks at Chu, who is being mentally attacked by the elder monk Chao. This becomes a fatal mistake. Katana misses a blow from the grass demon's fanned leaves. Katana intends to use a skill called plasma wool in combat. The result is not long in coming. Katana sets the grass demon on fire. The owner of the grass demon realizes that this flame is destructive to his pet. He is going to remove it from the battlefield. An associate of the owner of the grass demon tries to stop the guy telling him that in this case, the flame will spread to his soul. The guy does not take this warning seriously. He considers it childish horror stories. Suddenly, the guy begins to experience severe physical discomfort. His body begins to shake violently. The guy spontaneously combusts from the inside. A huge, fiery flame devours him from the inside. A fighter from the Luzhen team is completely burned in a huge flame, and the surprised screams of those around him can be heard. The senior monk, Chao, is unhappy that Chu has been hiding enormous power all the time. He cannot subjugate the guy's will with his mental attack. Chu tells the senior monk, Chu, in a sarcastic manner to continue enjoying the battle. The three leading attacking pets of the Lu Zhen team surround the single standing katana. The Lu Zhen team's fighters assess their chances of winning the tournament. Despite their advantage, they are not confident of an easy victory. They decide to calm down and not panic and first deal with the Chu squad and his spiritual pet. Chu continues to hold off the mental attack. He orders Katana to immediately take over the initiative. Katana lands a powerful strike with her paws on the hellish rhinoceros. The enemy is knocked out by the unexpected blow. Suddenly, a huge guard dog tries to grab Katana by the back paw. Having overcome the first line of defense of Team Lujin's soul pets, Katana approaches the Wind Fairy. 
An energy demon appears on Katana's path. He intends to protect the Wind Fairy and uses a shadow shield. The use of a shadow shield reliably protects the soul pets of the Lujin team. Katana is considering how to overcome the protection. Katana charges in, attempting to break through the shield, using a technique called the Bloodshed Claw. He manages to break through the shadow shield and attack the energy demon and wind fairy. With one hit, Katana destroys the energy demon and the wind fairy. The members of Team Lu Jen scream loudly, not believing that their best soul pets have been destroyed. The master of the main island and the masters of the neighboring islands are greatly surprised by the outcome of the battle. The senior monk Cao was very dissatisfied with the result of the fight. He was unable to take over Chu's mind with the help of a mental attack. The Lujen team members activate their magical packs. He admits defeat and tries to save the remaining spirit pets. The commander of the Luzen team is extremely dissatisfied with the behavior of his subordinates. He insults them, calling them a bunch of dirty losers. Team Luzhen's commander activates the magical packed seal to summon his spirit pet. A loud roar is heard. A huge guard wolf appears in the arena, ready to carry out any order of its master. The guard wolf attacks the Luzhen team fighters, mercilessly destroying them in an unequal battle. The central defender of the Luzhen team looks at what is happening in horror. A wave of horror grips him. The guard wolf left only the central defender of the Luzhen team alive. The Luzhen team leader orders the central defender to immediately summon the nightmare and continue the battle. The central defender says that if he summons a nightmare, he will have no soul strength left, and he will not be able to feed it. The commander of the Luzhen team offers the central defender to choose between summoning a nightmare and dying from the teeth of a guard wolf. The central defender has no choice. He agrees to summon a nightmare onto the playing field. The body of the central defender is surrounded by energy flames. He pronounces the magical mantra of summoning a nightmare. The magical pentagram grows to enormous sizes. The central defender continues to read the magical mantra of the challenge. A loud nightmare roar is heard, and a huge gray nightmare appears on the battlefield. The central defender is increasingly engulfed in energy flames. He is using the power of his soul to fuel the nightmare. Katana prepares to attack his superior opponent. He does not take his eyes off the nightmare. A huge gray nightmare lets out hellish howls and begins to slowly approach Katana. The gray nightmare swings its arm and hits the katana hard. Katana is unable to withstand the enormous magical force. The blow of the gray nightmare throws him tens of meters away. Chu watches as the wounded katana begins to be consumed by hellfire. The guy is unable to contain his emotions. A huge gray nightmare slowly approaches katana's unconscious body. The senior monk Kao watches the duel with a satisfied look. A satisfied smile appears on his face. The elder monk Kao reminds the guy that if he does not break his spiritual connection with katana, he will die. Chu gradually loses the strength to resist. The elder monk Chao continues his mental attack. Chu has practically no strength left to resist. He experiences severe pain, defending himself from a mental attack. The guy falls to the ground. Thin energy lines begin to envelop his body. Chu is engulfed in white energy fire, and loud cheers from fans can be heard coming from the stands. Chu screams loudly. He suddenly jumps to his feet, and a white nightmare appears behind the guy's back. A shining energy aura appears around the guy. His gaze is full of fierce hatred. The senior monk Kao realizes that his mental attack did not bring results. He looks at the guy in fear. The masters of the islands are very surprised that Chu is able to feed the white nightmare. The master of the main island says that he has not seen such spectacular and emotional competitions for a long time. Chu runs as fast as he can towards Katana. The spirit pet lies unconscious, engulfed in magical fire. The guy uses his practiced quick freezing skill against the gray nightmare. The gray nightmare screams loudly. His body begins to be covered with a thick layer of ice, which hinders his movement. Chu runs up to Katana. The guy is trying to use spiritual practices to restore his spiritual pet. Chu screams loudly. He does not intend to accept such a fate. He is overwhelmed with strong emotions. Chu and Katana are engulfed in the flames of the white ghost. The fire begins to grow rapidly. The white nightmare with great pleasure absorbs the spiritual strength and emotions of the guy. The entire playing field of the arena is engulfed in the huge flames of a white nightmare. The white nightmare is constantly growing in size. It is approaching the gray nightmare. The center forward who caused the gray nightmare cannot control the horror that grips him. 
The gray nightmare is engulfed in flames. He is unable to resist and begins to be consumed by the white nightmare. The center forward of the Lu Zhen team is experiencing severe physical ailments. A strong explosion is heard, which tears the gray nightmare into pieces, scattering in different directions. The lifeless body of the main defender falls to the ground. Chu sends Katana to the fourth dimension to rest and restore her health. The guy turns towards the senior monk Cao and looks at him carefully. The senior monk Tao tries to escape. His hand flashes with bright energy fire. In a moment, the entire body of the Cao senior monk is engulfed in energy fire. Chao is ready to resist to the last. He takes out his large, sharp combat blade. The senior monk Chao uses his war blade to get rid of his burning clothes by cutting them off himself. Chu tells Cao that he has no chance and uses hellfire and flame wool skills against the elder monk. Suddenly, the guy loses his magical power. The flames of the white nightmare that engulfed his body disappear. The senior monk, Cao, happily notices this, hoping for a speedy break in the connection between the guy and the white nightmare. He summons his spirit pet and orders it to destroy the guy. A loud howl and growl is heard. A huge guard wolf pounces on Chu. The guy deftly dodges a strong blow from the paw of a huge guard wolf. The senior monk Cao loses control of the situation with a loud cry. He demands that his spiritual pet destroy the guy. Chu falls to the ground, holding off a huge guard wolf trying to destroy him. Suddenly a huge strong hand grabs the guard wolf by the tail. The white nightmare has grabbed the guard wolf and intends to devour the aggressive animal. The fire of the white nightmare engulfs the guard wolf, and the nightmare begins to consume the elder monk's spiritual pet. Chu rambles, his mind haunted by memories from his past life. The guy remembers his home, which was attacked by ruthless enemies. In a borderline state, he is visited by terrible visions. A voice is heard demanding that the young master flee. The huge guard wolf of the senior monk cow is defeated. He lies paralyzed on the ground. Emitting a loud howl, the white nightmare lifts the paralyzed guard wolf by the tail and slowly brings it closer to its huge mouth. The white nightmare opens its mouth. It swallows the spirit pet of the senior monk cow. The chief master appears in front of Chu. The guy regains consciousness and looks at him carefully. Chu is sure that this man kidnapped him and brought him to the island of nightmares. The senior monk cow runs up to the chief master. He falls to his knees and addresses him. Senior monk cow tells the chief magistrate that he had no intention of destroying Chu. The Grandmaster tells Cao that he has been watching everything since the beginning of the competition and has seen all of his actions, including using a mental attack to block the connection with his soul pet. The voice of the Chief Master is heard, who is outraged that Cao tried to kill a student who has the potential to control the White Nightmare. The Chief Master demands that the senior monk Cao be removed from his sight immediately. The monks immediately obey his order. Chu begins to lose consciousness. The last thing he sees is Cao's limp body being carried away by the monks. Chu's eyes close, his spiritual strength leaves him, and darkness fills the guy's mind. A loud sound is heard. The guy loses the remnants of his spiritual connection with the white nightmare and falls to the ground. A richly dressed girl carefully watches what is happening from the podium for distinguished guests. A huge sailing frigate cuts through large waves. A fair wind inflates its sails. Chu gradually begins to regain consciousness, and an incomprehensible speech is heard somewhere in the distance. The guy comes to his senses and clearly hears the voice of the chief master, who asks him if he has come to his senses. Chu, greatly weakened, tries to raise his head to answer the chief master. Jumping sharply to his feet, the guy answers the chief master. He declares that he knows that he kidnapped him and brought him to the island of nightmares. The chief master informs the guy that his clan has died and his words have no power. For a moment, the guy is lost in his thoughts, trying to understand the motivation of the chief master. Chu asks the chief master who hired him, suggesting that it could be young. The chief master praises the guy for his intelligence and tells him that someone from the young clan is behind this. He appreciates Chu's potential and informs him that the young princess asked to be kept alive. The guy is overcome with great excitement at the thought of the young princess. He cannot hide his emotions. The chief master and Chu stand silently at the side of the frigate, looking at the huge expanse of the sea. A young princess sits on the upper deck of a frigate and reads a book. A light wind plays with her hair. Chu, being on the lower deck, carefully examines the young princess, immersed in her reading. It remains a mystery to the guy why the young princess saved him. 
The chief master informs the guy that she, like Chu, has been feeding the white nightmare from an early age. The chief master offers the guy two options for further developments. The first option is to pull the white nightmare out of Chu and send him home to live the life of an ordinary layman. The second option is to send the guy to prison on the island. Particularly dangerous prisoners are brought to the island and one survivor is taken away once every three years. The chief master promises the guy that if he survives three years, he will be taken from the island and accepted as a member of the nightmare castle. The chief master once again asks the guy to think about whether to live his life as a simple layman or upgrade his white nightmare to become a god. The guy is immersed in his thoughts trying to make a difficult choice. Chu continues to think hard, analyzing all possible options for future events. The guy's memory evokes the image of the main entrance to the ancestral castle of the young clan, the enemies of his family. Chu realizes that if he becomes an ordinary layman, he will not be able to take revenge on the young clan. The chief master does not rush the guy, he gives him time to think about the decision. Chu sharply calls out to the chief master and tells him that he has already made his decision. The guy decides to go to the island, where he will survive for three years and develop his spiritual connection with the white nightmare. The chief master positively evaluates the guy's decision. He did not expect a different answer. The chief master climbs the high steps to the upper deck. The young princess asks if the guy can survive three years living on a dangerous island. The chief master talks about the small probability of surviving, but notes that this is the guy's choice. The frigate confidently cuts through the waves, heading towards the mysterious island. The chief master suggests using a winged tiger to deliver the guy to the island. Chu feels a sense of exhilaration at being able to move around with the help of the winged tiger. The chief master informs the guy that the winged tiger will return in three years to take him away from the prison island. The winged tiger quickly runs across the deck of the ship and soars into the sky, sharply gaining altitude. Chu experiences great delight. The winged tiger is rapidly approaching the island prison. The guy carefully examines his future habitat. Suddenly something incomprehensible attracts the attention of the winged tiger. He looks around warily. The guy notices sudden movements under his cloak. He begins to move his shoulders convulsively. A large green caterpillar crawls onto the guy's shoulder. Chu asks it about the reason for the concern. The large green caterpillar looks with great wariness at the huge black cloud that is gathering over the winged tiger. Chu realizes that the big green caterpillar's premonition has never failed her. The guy raises his head, trying to peer into the huge black cloud that has appeared above them. The black cloud begins to turn into a huge air funnel. The guy gives the command to the winged tiger to immediately land on the island. The winged tiger is trying his best to land on the island as quickly as possible. At high speed, the winged tiger crashes into the dense forest of the island. Without having time to dodge, the winged tiger and its passenger crash into a huge tree. A strong blow awakens a forest ice falcon, serenely dozing on a tree. The winged tiger and Chu cannot recover for a long time due to the hard landing. The forest ice falcon looks angrily at the strange strangers who disturbed his sleep. The ice falcon flies into the air and attacks the winged tiger and Chu with a cloud of ice icicles. With great speed, the ice icicles are approaching the winged tiger and Chu who is next to him. The winged tiger notices in time a huge number of sharp pieces of ice approaching him. The winged tiger suddenly jumps to its feet and lets out a loud, angry roar. The forest ice falcon realizes that it has no chance in the confrontation with the winged tiger. It stops the attack and flies away. The guy is attracted to the winged tiger and thanks the animal for a great time. The winged tiger flies into the sky. The guy waves goodbye to him and asks him to come back for him in three years. Chu activates the magical contract seal to summon his spirit pet. The guy, together with Katana is going to explore the nearby territory. They confidently walk along the dirt road. Chu and Katana hear a rustling sound in the dense bushes. They are going to find out the cause of the strange sound. The guy carefully pushes aside the thick bushes in an attempt to discern the cause of the noise. Chu observes a stranger in front of him encased in a huge block of ice. The guy believes that the stranger was instantly frozen, since there are no signs of a struggle or wounds on the man's body. The big green caterpillar senses danger and immediately reports it to its owner. A forest ice falcon sits on a nearby tree and carefully watches the guy. Chu does not hold back his emotions. He loudly shouts at the ice falcon and demands that he leave him alone. Sitting on a tree, a forest ice falcon shoots a sharp piece of ice at the guy. 
By activating the Firewolf skill, Katana blocks the Forest Falcon's attack. Katana charges at the Ice Falcon and hits it with her paw. The Forest Ice Falcon dodges the Katana strike and tries to escape. The guy is worried about the condition of the Green Caterpillar. It has been showing great anxiety and increased activity lately. A large green caterpillar shoots a net made from its web at the Ice Falcon. The Forest Ice Falcon makes loud noises and its attempts to get rid of the net are unsuccessful. A huge flock of Forest Ice Falcons gathers to help their captive brother. A flock of Ice Falcons circles above the guy and his spiritual pet. The birds are preparing for a massive attack. The guy realizes the seriousness of the threat and commands his spirit pet to immediately flee. The forest ice falcons begin firing massive amounts of ice projectiles at Chu and Katana. The guy and Katana are hiding behind the trunk of a huge tall tree. The ice falcons do not stop firing. Chu believes that the tree trunk will not be able to withstand the endless attacks of the ice falcons. The guy shares with Katana his dissatisfaction with the prison island's hospitality. A large green caterpillar shoots its sticky web at the ice falcon. The sticky web reaches its target. It firmly grabs the ice falcon's paw. The ice falcon begins to gain height. It has dragged away a large green caterpillar along with its web. The bird continues to drag the green caterpillar behind it, and the voice of a guy is heard who orders the web to be torn apart. The large green caterpillar does not intend to tear the web. On the contrary, it generates even more sticky substance. In a matter of seconds, the ice falcon's body is covered with a cocoon of web released by a green caterpillar. The insect continues its attack, shooting more webs at the ice falcons and seals them into cocoons. The guy is very surprised by the ability of the green caterpillar, which easily coped with a huge number of aggressive birds of prey. A large green caterpillar wove a huge web on which it placed captive forest ice falcons. The guy approaches the web. He cannot hide his surprise at the speed of creating the perfect structure. Suddenly, Chu hears the sound of breaking branches and the footsteps of a person approaching. The guy decides to hide behind a tree with his spirit pet. A huge stranger approaches the web. He is no less surprised than the guy by the huge structure with a large number of cocoons. The stranger takes out a huge knife. The guy intends to stop him and destroy the web, as he decides to keep the caterpillar pupae intact. Chu and Katana come out of their hiding place. The stranger is greatly surprised by the presence of uninvited guests. He turns to face the guy and tells him that he appeared on his road in vain. The stranger rudely begins to threaten the guy and his spiritual pet with physical harm. Suddenly, the hands of the aggressive stranger are bound by the strong, sticky web of a green caterpillar. A loud scream is heard, and a moment later the stranger finds himself in a huge, sticky cocoon. At the last moment, the stranger manages to call on his spiritual pet for help. This doesn't help him as a second later his spirit pet is tightly bound to his cocoon by a strong web. Chu never ceases to admire the green caterpillar. He appreciates the strength of the web, which the fourth-level spirit pet could not break. The stranger and his spiritual pet are securely chained in a cocoon. They do not have the slightest chance of freeing themselves from the captivity of the green caterpillar. The guy decides to touch the web because he feels the spiritual energy emanating from it. The web hits the guy with a strong discharge of energy, and he instantly pulls his hand back. Chu thinks that he is extremely lucky to have the green caterpillar as his ally. The guy decides to look at the trophies obtained in battle and opens the stranger's travel bag. Inside, Chu discovers books of psychedelic techniques and a piece of stale bread. The guy considers himself very lucky with such trophies. Chu is trying to get more information about his green caterpillar and its web capabilities. From the book, Chu learns that his green caterpillar can move into the second stage, but this takes a lot of time. The guy doesn't know what abilities the green caterpillar will have in the second stage. He will be looking forward to this moment. The guy agrees with Katana to guard the cocoon of the green caterpillar until it comes out. Continuous guarding and monitoring of the cocoon occurs over the next seven days. During this time, the green cocoon of the caterpillar acquires enormous dimensions. It can hardly fit between the trunks of large trees. The guy thinks that the idea of staying and watching the cocoon of the green caterpillar was not very good. They wasted a lot of time aimlessly. Katana approaches the cocoon of the green caterpillar and tests its strength with its paw. Chu calms his spirit pet. He tells him that there is no reason to worry since the cocoon is large and thick. The guy invites Katana to start exploring the space of the island and then return and check the cocoon. 
Chu and Katana walk along a dirt road in hopes of finding a nearby village. Suddenly the road ends abruptly with a high cliff. Chu and Katana stop in front of them. A flock of graceful birds soars high in the sky above the guy and his spiritual pet. The guy turns to his spirit pet and invites him to return back to the place from which they came. Something caught the spirit pet's attention. He positioned himself on the edge of the cliff and looked down. The guy becomes curious about what could have attracted Katana's attention. He approaches the edge of the cliff and carefully looks down. Below, an inconspicuous entrance to a cave is discovered. The guy suggests that there may be a special ice treasure there. The guy's guesses are confirmed by the ice falcons that settled in this place. Chu and Katana slowly climb down the vines growing on the cliff, trying to remain invisible to the ice falcons. After some time, the guy and his spirit pet reach the entrance to the cave. Chu and Katana enter the cave. The guy is surprised by the icy cold and strong wind inside the cave. The guy is glad that Katana has the opportunity to use his fire wool technique. Chu and his spirit pet begin to slowly move deeper into the labyrinths of the cave. Soon they reach a huge underground hall. The guy stops. He is amazed at what he sees. In the center of the hall, there is a huge ice crystal, inside of which there is an unknown creature. Chu approaches the crystal, trying to see who is inside the ice. The ice crystal begins to crack and gradually collapses. The guy and his spiritual pet jump to a safe distance. A large ice crystal shatters into pieces, and an ice fairy hovers in the center of the underground hall. The guy orders Katana to be careful, as such creatures are very dangerous and unpredictable. Katana kicks off the ground and jumps into the air to strike the ice fairy. The ice fairy slowly turns towards the Katana attacking her. She has not yet recovered from her long suspended animation. Chu orders his soul pet to immediately use the firewall technique. Katana's entire body glows with bright fire as he quickly approaches the ice fairy. Katana uses her fire fur technique and hits the ice fairy hard with her paw. The ice fairy flies to the wall of the cave and hits it hard, causing the rock to become covered with cracks. The spirit pet's blow did not have a strong effect. The ice fairy did not receive serious damage. Its attack only angered her. The ice fairy materializes a large number of ice swords around her, which slowly spin around her. A moment later, she points ice swords at the uninvited guests who disturbed her sleep. Katana, using his speed and quick reflexes, deftly dodges the deadly swords flying at him. The ice fairy, using her magic, materializes new ice swords for the next attack. With a huge number of ice swords flying towards the spirit pet, Katana has no clear understanding of how he can defeat the ice fairy. The guy orders Katana not to stand still. He demands that he be constantly on the move. Katana clearly follows the recommendations of its owner. He begins to constantly move, an ice fairy, and is unable to aim and hit him. The fast movements, combined with the fire wool technique, significantly increase the temperature, causing the ice swords to begin to melt. The ice fairy realizes that she has fallen into a fiery trap from which she cannot escape. Chu is fascinated by the Ice Fairy's inexperience and hopes to take possession of the Spirit Pet to perfect her fighting skills. The guy activates the magical seal of the contract to enter into a contract with the Ice Fairy. Loud sounds of approaching forest ice falcons can be heard. By the sound, the guy understands that there is a whole flock of ice falcons. This makes him seriously tense. Loud cries of ice falcons are heard. A huge flock of birds strives to help the Ice Fairy. The guy realizes that he has very little time to get a new spiritual pet. An inexperienced ice fairy rushes around inside a fire trap. She is unable to get out of it. The guy again activates the magical seal of the spirit pet contract to capture the ice fairy. The ice fairy is a little scared. She squeaks loudly and resists signing the contract with the guy. A huge number of forest falcons gather at the entrance to the cave. The birds are ready to repel the ice fairy from uninvited guests. The guy understands that if he hesitates and does not immediately leave the large inner hall of the cave, he will die. Chu and Katana decide to immediately begin a retreat. They see a narrow crevice nearby that can protect them from the ice falcons. The guy feels cold and movement behind him. He makes the assumption that the ice fairy is following him. The ice fairy flies around the guy several times and hangs in the air laughing loudly. The guy strongly scolds the forest ice falcons and the ice fairy who lured them. The birds of prey fire hundreds of ice projectiles at the guy and his soul pet. A huge explosion occurs, the wave from which throws Chu and Katana into the far corner of a deep cave. The bright morning sun rises over the high mountains of Prison Island. 
The guy studies magical literature to learn all the capabilities and skills of ice fairies. Chu wakes up the ice fairy and tells her that their cooperation will be mutually beneficial. He promises to develop her magical abilities to perfection. The guy thinks that the cave is safe and relatively cozy. At that moment, the sound of approaching steps is heard. At the entrance to the cave, Chu hears a conversation between two men who are discussing the possible presence of strangers inside the cave. One of the men activates the magical pack seal to summon his spirit pet. His friend joins and he activates his magic seal. The men's spiritual pets are two huge ice forest falcons. Chu cannot contain his emotions. He lets out a loud cry and curses the birds of prey. The ice fairy lies on the floor of the cave. She watches what is happening with an indifferent gaze. A moment later, the ice fairy launches her sharp ice swords at the forest falcons, which destroy the aggressive birds. The ice fairy takes on the men who disturbed their peace and launches a swarm of ice swords at them, causing them to run away in horror. The guy does not intend to let the attackers go. He orders the ice fairy to use the ice wall skill. The ice fairy concentrates energy in her hands. She is going to block the entrance to the cave. A huge ice wall appears a few meters from the guy and the ice fairy. The attackers manage to escape with impunity. Chu clenches his fists tightly. He can hardly contain his intense irritation. The ice fairy was very upset by what happened. She sincerely wanted to help the guy, but the level of her magical skill did not allow her to do this. The guy calms the forest fairy. He tells her that over time they will be able to work as a team, and she will have more combat experience. Making loud sounds, the ice wall crumbles into small crystals, clearing the way to the entrance to the cave. The guy leaves the cave outside. He carefully examines the surrounding area. Chu sees a large number of objects on the road that were dropped by the retreating ill-wishers. The guy decides to carefully examine the enemy's items. He believes that among the unnecessary trash there may be useful things. Chu's guesses are justified. He notices a document that, judging by the seal, belongs to the Nightmare Castle. The guy carefully examines the document and comes to the conclusion that this is a detailed list of prisoners on the prison island. Chu carefully studies the list of prisoners on the prison island. An ice fairy flutters playfully next to him. Suddenly, the guy finds his name among the list of prisoners, as well as the name of the senior monk, Cow. The ice fairy tells the guy that there is a map on the back of the document. The guy carefully examines the detailed parts of the island indicated on the map. Chu decides to find the two attackers to get answers to his many questions. The ice fairy is in a playful mood. She snatches the document from the guy's hands and tries to run away with it. The guy demands that the ice fairy immediately stop fooling around and return the list of prisoners to him. Chu's order stops the ice fairy. The guy thinks about giving a name to the new spiritual pet. He asks the new spirit pet if he likes the new name Ning. The ice fairy approaches the guy. She really likes her new name and expresses sincere gratitude. The guy is pleased with himself. He considers himself the best specialist in the field of giving out names. Chu follows the trail of the attackers. The guy intends to catch up with them sooner or later, as he believes that they will make a halt. Chu stops. The guy hears a loud voice coming from the bushes, calling for help. Chu, careful not to reveal himself, follows the voice. He comes out to a large clearing where an officer in a white uniform is interrogating one of the men who attacked him. The officer interrogates the man. He demands that he immediately return the magic card. Chu realizes how important the document is in his hands. The guy hopes to put it to good use in the future. The officer believes that interrogating the prisoner is a waste of time and activates a magical seal to summon a spirit pet. The voice of a prisoner is heard begging for mercy as a huge, aggressive spirit pet approaches him. In a matter of seconds, a huge, aggressive creature makes short work of the defenseless captive. Chu recognizes the beast as a spirit pet belonging to the young family, and the guy concludes that there are people from this family on the island. A voice is heard telling the spirit pet to return to camp and interrogate the remaining suspects. Chu carefully examines the officer in a white uniform, standing with his back to the guy. Unexpectedly, the guy recognizes the officer as his old acquaintance named Yang Ji. Chu remembers his hometown where he was born and spent most of his life. The guy recalls how, as a child, he was constantly offended by aggressive bullies from the young family. Yang Ji humiliates young Chu. He says that the guy and his family are the scum of society. Big Brother Chu calls Yang Ji an idiot and orders him to move away from his brother immediately. Chu, defeated, lies on the ground. He is infinitely glad to see his brother who has come to his aid.
Elder Brother Chu activates a magic seal and summons his spirit pet to help. Yang Ji exudes confidence as he realizes that Big Brother Chu's soul pet has no chance of winning. Elder Brother Chu sits next to his defeated spirit pet, greatly grieving over its death. Yang Ji is pleased with himself and continues to insult Chu and his family, calling them names. Chu summons his spirit pet. Today he intends to settle old scores with Yang Ji. Katana sneaks up to Yang Ji and attacks, jumping from a tall tree. Spiritual pet Yang Ji manages to notice Katana's attack and warns its owner about it. Chu and Katana intend to go to the end. They believe that only death can stop them. Yang Ji looks closely at the guy. He can't believe that Chu is in front of him. Yang Ji asks the guy if he is Chu and what he is doing in the island prison. Chu tells Yang Ji that it is really him, and he is on the island thanks to the young family. Yang Ji feels confident and has nothing to fear as he views his opponents as a weak pair consisting of a loser and a dumb fox. The formidable Yang Ji spirit pet rushes into a furious attack, and the voice of its owner is heard calling for the destruction of the losers. Spiritual Pet Chu advances to the second level of his martial prowess. Katana bravely runs towards the enraged beast using camouflage techniques. Spiritual Pet Yangji swipes Katana with its huge paw, but the fox deftly dodges it. Katana counterattacks her opponent, delivering a series of blows to the body and head of the fearsome beast. A loud roar is heard, and Yangji's spirit pet is injured, causing it to go into a state of wild rage. Yangji believes that there is no reason to worry, since his spirit pet received minor injuries, which will only embolden him. Spiritual pet Yangji strikes hard with its huge horns. The fox flies high into the air. The opponent's blow is so strong that the katana flies into nearby bushes. Destroying everything in its path, Yangji's soul pet moves towards the bushes into which katana flew. Katana uses a tactical trick. He jumps from a high tree onto the opponent's soul pet. The katana delivers a final blow to her opponent that blows his head off. Yangji is shaking violently in a fit of impotent anger. He cannot believe in the victory of the opponents whom he despised. Chu tells Yangji that he is a stupid and arrogant creature and orders katana to destroy the enemy. Yangji does not intend to continue the fight. He tries to escape. Katana pursues him. Yangji sees that Katana is catching up to him and uses a gust of wind against the soul pet. A huge air vortex appears behind the fleeing Yangji, which lifts the attacking Katana high in the air. Yangji does not notice a stone lying in his way. He trips over it and falls to the ground. Yangji is aware of the fact that losing concentration in a fight could cost him his life. Using the time gain, he activates the magical contract and summons his next soul pet. The flying Hellwolf is capable of emitting powerful ultrasonic waves to destroy its opponents. Chu and Katana have great difficulty resisting the flying Hellwolf's ultrasonic waves. Chu believes that such an opponent is too strong for Katana. The guy intends to summon Ning, since she has good defensive techniques. Chu activates a magical pact seal to remove Katana from the battle. For the guy, Katana's refusal to return to a safe dimension comes as a complete surprise. Katana intends to remain on the battlefield to continue the fight and destroy the flying Hellwolf. Chu is pleased with his soul pet's choice and happily allows him to continue the battle. Yangji is heard laughing loudly as he uses the root attack against his opponents. Dozens of huge thorny shoots attack Chu and his spirit pet. Chu uses an effective flash-freezing technique against aggressive thorny shoots. Katana jumps over the ice wall to launch her attack on Yangji and the flying Hellwolf. Waiting behind a huge ice barrier for Katana is a flying hellwolf who immediately attacks the fox. Yangji is pleased that his spirit pet is moving into the main magic phase. Katana begins her transformation to move to the second level. The flying hellwolf has entered its main magic phase and attacks Katana with renewed vigor. Katana is wounded. A strong blow throws him tens of meters to the side. Chu is very worried about his pet and hopes that Katana survived. The body of the spiritual pet Chu lies motionless on the ground. Katana shows no signs of life. The flying hell wolf keeps his gaze on Chu as he waits for a command from his master. Chu regrets following Katana's lead and not sending his spirit pet to a safe dimension. Yangji feels triumphant. He enjoys the moment and slowly gives the command to the flying hell wolf. The enraged flying hell wolf instantly charges at his opponent. Chu summons an ice fairy, the guy along with his new soul pet, intends to use a double ice wall for protection. Within a second, a huge double wall of ice appears between the Chu team and the flying Hellwolf running towards them. The flying Hellwolf crashes into Chu team's ice defense at full speed. A blow of enormous force shatters the double ice wall. 
Chu flies to the side along with a huge number of small pieces of ice. Flying a huge distance, Chu crashes to the ground, raising huge clouds of dust. The wounded katana lies on the ground. He gathers his strength to get to his feet and continue the fight. A few meters from katana, Chu lies unconscious on the ground. The guy cannot recover from a powerful blow from a flying hell wolf. Using her last strength, Katana approaches her owner as he lies on the ground. Despite the severe wounds, the spirit pet is going to fight to the death to protect its owner. Katana concentrates all his last strength. He transforms and moves to a new magical level. An enraged flying hell wolf rushes towards the unconscious Chu and the Katana protecting him. An attacking flying hell wolf is met by a huge protective energy vortex. Katana, having moved to a new magical level, is able to control huge flows of energy. Katana has the ability to transform into a two-tailed divine fox. Chu regains consciousness, glad that Katana survived and reached the level of a divine fox. Yangji watches closely what is happening. His sense of confidence gradually begins to change into uncontrollable fear. Yangji demands his soul pet to stop Katana immediately. The flying hell wolf does not respond to its owner's commands. It stands still indecisively and does not intend to attack the katana. Yangji becomes enraged and yells at his spirit pet and demands that his orders be carried out immediately. A huge energy vortex is approaching the flying hell wolf, paralyzed with fear. The spirit pet is unable to move. Inside the energy vortex is katana. He has completely completed his transformation and has taken the form of a divine fox. The flying hell wolf watches as the katana approaches him, realizing his impending doom. A network of thin energy rays envelops the body of the flying hell wolf. Spiritual pet Yangji has no chance of surviving. Energy rays are cutting his body into small pieces. Yangji looks at the remains of his formidable spiritual pet, of whose greatness not a trace remains. Yangji breaks out in a cold sweat as he realizes that he will be Katana's next target. Yangji is trying to escape from the battlefield. A huge energy vortex is chasing him. Katana, transformed into a divine fox, jumps out of the energy vortex. Katana uses her upgraded firewall skill and shoots a field of burning plasma at Yangji. A field of burning plasma overtakes Yangji. The enemy loses his hand in an unequal battle. Yangji asks for mercy. In exchange for the gift of life, he promises to answer any questions from Chu and his spiritual pet. Chu and his soul pet have no questions for Yangji. The enemy's fate is unenviable. Chu and Katana leave the defeated enemy. They intend to continue their mission and uncover the secrets of the magic list. Chu and his spirit pet decide to recuperate in their new home, intending to arrive at the cave before dusk. Chu and Katana first strengthen the entrance to the cave and light a fire to dry out after the evening rain. Chu's voice is heard saying that he will not stop at Yangji, and the entire young family will suffer the deserved punishment. The guy decides to use psychedelic manuscripts to get answers to the questions that bother him. Chu tries to find out how Katana turned into a divine fox. Katana is resting after a hard day, sitting near the fire. Chu's voice is heard. The guy says that all the treasures of the island will belong to him. Chu is trying to put together all the information he has acquired recently into a logical structure. The defeated Yangji tells the guy that the prison island contains a large amount of magical treasures. Yangji says that in order to obtain magic trophies, you must defeat opponents from the magic list. In addition to Yangji, there is a large group of fighters from the young family on the island. They came to the island for magical trophies. Chu intends to find and destroy all members of the young family. The ice fairy hovers in the air above her prey and whistles a cheerful tune. Chu believes that the training is not in vain, and Ning's fighting skills have improved markedly. Ning is going to show the guy a mysterious gorge. She believes that this location will be useful for Chu. The forest fairy heads to the nearby mountains and insists that the guy follow her. After some time, Ning and Chu arrive at the place. In front of them is a high, narrow gorge. The guy likes the beautiful appearance of the gorge, but he does not understand why Ning is attracted to this place. The ice fairy flies up to the guy and shows unusual flowers emitting energy in her hands. Ning points the guy to a place where a large number of energy-emitting plants grow. The guy believes that plants can be useful and is going to explore the place that Ning points to. The ice fairy rejoices at the fact that she is of great benefit to Chu. Ning and Chu approach a steep cliff and see a large clearing of brightly glowing plants below. The ice fairy wants to go down as soon as possible so that the guy can take a closer look at the magical plants. 
Chu goes downstairs. He realizes that he will need a large amount of ice ginseng in the future. At the edge of the clearing, there is a mysterious creature who is carefully watching Chu and the ice fairy. The guy senses the presence of a stranger and carefully looks around. He commands the ice fairy to immediately use ice armor for protection. A loud roar is heard and an aggressive predator rushes to attack Ning and Chu from a dark crevice. Ning manages to apply ice armor and instantly a high wall of ice appears in the predator's path. The defense is unable to contain the predator. It crashes into the ice wall, breaking it. Ning, using his ice defense skills, tries to seal the hole in the broken wall. The ice fairy does not have time to do this. Chu is subjected to a strong blow from the predator, which throws him away from the protective wall. The beast has colossal strength. Its blow throws the guy tens of meters into a narrow crevice. Chu is trying to bring himself to his senses. Everything happened so quickly that the guy does not understand what happened. A huge striped tiger stands opposite the entrance to the cave in which the guy hid. Chu hears his loud roar. Chu doesn't understand what a level 5 soul pet can do here. The guy is glad that he was able to hide in a narrow crevice. This gives him time to think about the situation and find a way to solve the problem. The ice fairy was damaged by a predator's attack, and the level 5 striped tiger is watching her closely. Chu instructs Ning to immediately leave the open space and take cover at a safe distance. The guy considers it a big plus that Ning lacks a heart and circulatory system, otherwise she would already be dead. The striped tiger was not interested in the wounded ice fairy. He was more interested in Chu, hiding in the crevice. Using effective acrobatic jumps, the guy jumps to a safe distance. Chu hopes that the width of the crevice will not allow the striped tiger to get inside the cave. The huge size of the striped tiger does not allow him to penetrate inside the cave in which the guy hid. Chu decides to stay in a relatively safe place and wait for the tiger to leave. The guy finds a way to take control of the striped tiger. He opens his bag to find the necessary magical artifact. Chu takes out a ring from his bag that can be used to block a pet that is not under contract. The guy puts the ring on his finger. He has no doubt about the effectiveness of this magical artifact. Chu tries to establish a spiritual connection with a huge striped tiger, but the predator does not outwardly react to the influence. Suddenly, a striped tiger rushes into a furious attack on the guy, heading towards him with lightning speed. The strong roar of the striped tiger deafens the guy. He realizes that the magic ring has no effect on the pet. The striped tiger was once again unable to penetrate the narrow crevice. He slowly moves to the side. A huge animal lies down near the entrance to a narrow crevice and falls asleep. Striped tiger hopes that Chu will not be able to figure out his cunning trick. Katana brings Chu a huge forest boar in order to appease and win over the striped tiger. Chu throws a huge forest boar to the striped tiger. The animal is greatly surprised by such a gift. The guy tells the striped tiger that if he changes his harsh disposition, he will constantly receive generous gifts from him. Chu turns his attention to the strong glow of the magic list under his cloak. The magic list brightly highlights the names of the prisoners who are next to the guy. Chu looks at the card located on the back of the magic list. The prison island area map shows the exact location of nearby prisoners. The guy carefully studies this information and tries to remember the coordinates of the prisoners. Chu comes to the conclusion that he can be found by tracking the magic list. The guy decides to hide it safely. Chu buries the magic list deeply near an inconspicuous tree, carefully camouflaging the cache. In the future, in order not to forget the burial place of the magic list, Chu makes a mark on a tree growing next to the cache. Two guys notice Chu's name glowing on their magic lists and they set out to find the guy. One of the guys is called Liang. He knows about the existence of a striped tiger living in a cave and intends to make a spiritual pact with him. Chu sneaks up on the guys and carefully eavesdrops on their conversations. He recognizes Liang as a fighter from the young family. Liang and his friend approach the entrance of the cave. They intend to lure the striped tiger out. The partner asks Liang to keep a safe distance. The guy snaps and asks not to teach him. Liang and his partner carefully sneak up on the striped tiger. They identify it as a fifth-grade spirit pet. Liang activates the magical pet contract seal to summon the wind demon. The summoned wind demon uses an air funnel to throw the unsuspecting striped tiger into the wall. The striped tiger, in a fit of insane rage, rushes at its offenders, but cannot overcome the narrow crevice. Liang, seeing that the striped tiger cannot overcome the obstacle, teases him with impunity. Chu watches closely from a high ledge in the cave. 
Chu thinks it's time for him to play a prank on the young family fighter. The guy activates the flash freezing skill. With this skill, he generates a huge ice wall that blocks the exit from the cave.